Welcome everyone. We're gonna play New Dwarf Game 2, Nude Elf Game, also known as Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance 2. My god, that's fantastic. Gangrel, thank you for the host. That that like monitoring is a little loud. Let me let me fix that for myself so I can turn. Oops, turn this stuff down. I don't want it to feed into the mic because that's always annoying when that happens. Oop, no, I don't want to mute it entirely. There we go. There we go. Dank Alliance. This game is, you know, honestly, this game isn't even dank. It's just good. <laughs> it's just a good game. Not as good as the first one, though, oddly. I feel like there are some problems with this game that weren't present in the first one. There's the incorrectly clothed dwarf from the first game. Also, the other two characters like basically don't exist. They weren't there. They can begin revisionist the Onyx Tower for their own. Now it's only fitting that I offer you the hospitality of my keep and reward. I'm sure you'll find its dungeons to your liking. Seize them. So, uh, let's see. What happened... What happened last time? We started out just wandering around, I guess. Um, we, um... We are playing as a dark elf named v Vydra. Er. I can't do that here. And, um... I can't do that. Oh, there was audio levels. I can't do that here. It seems fine. I can't do that here. Um So I guess like our family uh our like house our family like our, our noble house of dark elves got like effed up or like there was some infighting and uh <laughs> That's true, FaZe. Welcome, FaZe. Welcome, Hunter. 104.3. So, we, um... Like... We got kicked out or something, and now we're, like... Adventuring to try to, like, raise funds to... Back our house. Get, like, allies and equipment and stuff for our house to, um... Rise to power once again. Um, I forget if we actually started using... Yeah, we started using items because we can put... Um, yeah, we can put... My god, that's fantastic. Reg, thank you for the host. Uh, we can put items on... Uh, yeah, this is Forgotten Realms. We can put items... Or we can put uh, enchantments onto our... Uh, Onto our armor, <clears throat> which we've done. You'll notice we have some pretty good equipment already for, for four hours into the game. Um, so we can't be... We can't... We, uh, we supposedly can't be stunned or slowed. We have 30% fire, cold, shock, acid, poison resistance. Um, we have incredible uh, combat reflexes, sprinting, and fortitude. And uh, we have this throwing dagger. <laughs> yeah, we can we can pretty much retire at this point, but um, we can get more gold whenever we want. I can't do that here. I can't. New PB and zookeeper and money, money. Nice. I can't. Congratulations, Ridge. 
So we, um, what do we do? Uh, where's our, our quest log? Use the vault key. Use Durbum's vault key to enter a treasure chamber in the halls of the hammer. Uh, acquire the orb of thunder from Liren's hold for jerk. Explore the caves of Skull Gorge. I am pending disaster. Welcome. I can't do that here. I can't do that here. I can't do that here. Can't do that here. All right, Skull Gorge. Oh, go to Wood of Sharp Teeth too. Man, the Skull Gorge. We have a quest for Skull Gorge. So we've also uh. We've also leveled up our unarmed to a kind of crazy level. So we're, um... We're doing a decent bit of damage. With unarmed attacks. Now, one of the things I mentioned earlier is that there are, um... Oh, right, we can... We can... Sprint. Sprinting is one of the, uh... Class features of the monk. So, um, one of the things that this game has that the, um, the first game doesn't have, and that I think is kind of a negative, is that you, <laughs> Fist of the Nude Elf, um, you can't, or you have the ability to, right? You have the ability to enchant items to add extra effects to them. Um, but as a result of adding that feature and presumably wanting people to use it, um, they kind of like made it necessary to use it because really good items don't drop from enemies. Um, enemies drop items that are to be enchanted. And they also designed the um, the economy around enchanting items once, not like maintaining a consistent upgrade path. So like, basically they're just like, hey, in the first game, players had too much money, so let's make money worthless in this game. And let's make... Let's make money more scarce and uh, more scarce and worth less, not necessarily worthless, um, so that players will always have to be frugal throughout the entirety of the game. Um, so, like, you never get proper magic items from enemies. Um, in order to enchant items using the enchantment system, you have to use like hundreds of thousands of gold worth of materials plus hundreds of thousands of gold just to enchant, to do the enchantment. But then the game doesn't actually give you any normal items, so you can't rely on drops. It's kind of the same problem that um, Diablo 3's auction house had at its launch, where they, like, fucked up the loot tables so stuff would be rarer to try to force people to use the auction house. But then, like, using the auction house took all the fun out of the game. So it was, it was like, there was no reason to actually play the game ever. <laughs> it was like, you know, if you, if you, um, you know, if you, if you go buy the item at the even without real money, right? If you if you use the in-game currency, the gold currency, um, yeah, the water the water programming is very important in this game and in the and in the uh, and in the first game. But uh, yeah, you go spend your gold at the auction house. You get an item that's like not gonna drop for forty minutes of gameplay. Like, why go fight monsters if you're never gonna get a better item from it? And by the time you, like, by the time you naturally get better item drops, the stuff you can buy from the auction house is even better. 
even, it's that much better than uh, than the stuff that's dropping. So this game has that problem as well. It's kind of one of the earlier examples uh, of this this particular problem that I can think of. And the way we're mitigating that in this playthrough is we're using another um, critical flaw of the game uh, to our advantage. Which is, uh, if you import a character from a save file as the second player, they keep their inventory every time. Now, if you're like me, and you are keenly aware of exploits in games, which I think a lot of a lot of players are, uh, you immediately know that you can then duplicate any number of any amount of items. Grand Dervish's studded leather helmet. The hell. Shield expert. Right, so you can duplicate any number of items any amount of times uh, indefinitely, immediately. You can also sell items. Oops, I forgot. Don't use sprint too much. Um, you can also sell those items for a profit by duplicating the most expensive items you have. So, very early on in the game, you can equip yourself with the most powerful items in the game, and, uh... <laughs> Welcome, Gangrel. Welcome to my channel. Pleased to meet you. <laughs> um, so, uh... So... The, oh, that's to the world map. We don't want to go there. Um, so, as a result, you can get, like, you can do whatever the hell you want with the item creation system extremely early on. What's good about that is um, a lot of games, there's a problem with certain games. <laughs> Chubo, you know that's not true. Melmations or anything but proud and noble. Well, maybe they're proud. They're not noble, though. Good lord. Um, so, there's a problem with games that have um, like s scaling of the player. Um, where, like, you level up and you get better equipment as you go along. And one of the biggest challenges to that is uh, the game starts difficult and gets easy. Um, it happens in nearly every game um, that has, like, leveling up. And uh, a really good example of this, I think, is um, Symphony of the Night. Right? Great game. Excellent, fantastic, fantastic game. But uh, if you dick around too much or if you do, like, 100% of the content, it gets extremely easy. Um, well, so here's the thing. These goblins, like, with, with the, um, with the level of stuff that I have, I should be fighting elder goblins, or, or elder dragons and stuff, right? And beholders and, and great monsters. But also, like, it shouldn't take two hits to kill a goblin riding a wolf. But it does. Because that's how they designed the game. Um, so everything in this game is like jacked up beyond belief in terms of like difficulty scaling. Um, goblins with like 50 hit points. Um, so one of the things that... Uh, yeah, three hits to kill that wolf. Um, so one of the things that jacking your equipment up early on does is it gives the game a more linear difficulty scale right um here we go combat reflexes we want that it gives you a, a more um a more linear uh scale because you're no longer uh 
you're no longer increasing your gear as you go along so the game gets easier. Your gear is static. So the game will get harder. It'll start out very easy, and it'll go from very easy to, like, medium. Um, let's do uh, Crushing Blow. Now, we'll level up Crushing Blow. Uh, it is it is set to deinterlace. Um, it's probably slightly off in frame rate. There's a uh, there's an issue with Windows in general, where um, Windows as a whole does not provide a stable frame rate. Um, so anything that's anything that's run through the DirectX, like yeah, look at that. Goblin Shaman took five hits, which means he has like 250 HP. Um, yeah, so Windows as a whole has a problem where anything that's run through the DirectX pipeline um, cannot have a stable frame rate on some systems. Uh, it is unknown. It is unknown why <laughs> this occurs. Um, there is a problem with OBS uh, in particular, in which uh, OBS. OBS runs everything through the DirectX pipeline. So, uh... Open the infinite grimoire one second. Um, yeah, so... So, because you cannot get a, f a stable frame rate in Windows, you can't, uh... You can't deinterlace properly anything that goes through... Uh, anything that goes through the uh, DirectX pipeline cannot be deinterlaced de properly. Unless it's deinterlaced before it goes there. So OBS runs everything through the DirectX pipeline before it's displayed or before it's deinterlaced. So um, the flickering that you see is OBS failing to display uh, or failing to maintain a consistent frame rate to uh, DirectX or through DirectX. Well, unfortunately, there's not much I can do about that. The um, if I turn off deinterlacing entirely, the uh, the shimmer on stuff will go away. We can we can check this out. Shimmer will go away. <laughs> oh, that's good. <laughs> that's good positioning. So the shimmer goes away if I turn off deinterlacing, which turning off, I'm, I'm making air quotes, turning off deinterlacing means a comb filter. Um, if I turn it back on, Yadif 2X, then we'll occasionally get shimmer. But uh, it'll otherwise look good in motion, which most of the game is 3D motion, so we don't want to we don't want to mess that up. I love that if you get anywhere near a wall, your sprint stops. It's like sprinting in corridors is almost impossible. You know, speaking of post-processing the PS2, um, I don't know, Slave Jobs. I haven't tested it. I haven't tested it. I do know that some people are not affected by this issue as 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 uh, severely, and I know that if you have a higher speed display, your desktop refresh rate, uh, your desktop refresh rate. Um, influences how severe the issue is. Which is great. Which is great. It's like, man, I need to upgrade to 144 hertz display in order to play my 60 hertz games without, like, the interlacing problems <laughs> on the internet. Um. 
Oh man, is that a goblin? Is that a goblin with 150 hit points? Oh yeah, man, 240 hertz or um, even perhaps even higher. Who knows? 4,000 hertz display. I, it's not. You cannot. <laughs> there's no. There's no way to. Uh, there's no way to, like, correct the source of the issue, because it's like it's not about what's set. It's what is. Um, it's not about what's set. It's about whether the value that's set is consistent or not. And that has, as far as I've tested, that is not consistent between uh, manufacturers of GPUs. Uh, it, yeah, it's completely, it's completely automatic. If you, um, if you access it via a different interface that does not run through, for example, DirectX, um, it's completely fine. So, I have these, um, I have these windows open that I use to control my, uh, my inputs for the capture card. And they use a, uh, GDI Plus, like a very, very simple display, uh, mechanism. GDI Plus, which is like legacy stuff left over from Windows 95, probably. Um... And the GDI Plus stuff is 100% stable. Um, it's only stuff that passes through the DirectX pipeline. You can also see this with, um, if you launch games in MAME using, uh, using a non-full screen mode in DirectX mode that have a 60 hertz uh, flicker, you'll see that... Um, You'll see, like, non-uniform flashing. <laughs> buy a... Should you buy 1,000 Super Famicom games? At that link. I don't know what the price is. The answer to that question is, uh... The answer to that question is dependent on two things. One. Oh, it created a hole here. Good. Uh, one. Are any of them undumped? Or do they have? Or do they have their? Um, do they have uh, their doodads not scanned and properly like digitized? Oh, are they just carts? Then absolutely not. <laughs> if it's just carts, then no. <laughs> I would only go for it if they if they have their doodads intact, and uh, and the doodads are are unscanned. Otherwise, get a flash cart. I recommend getting a flash cart because no one outside of. Uh, No one outside of, uh, like, the collectors themselves, who have been collecting things in order to sell them specifically, um, the, uh, those are the only people who benefit from buying old carts and stuff. So I recommend against it at at any juncture. But as far as I know, like almost the entire catalog of Super Nintendo games, Super Famicom games are um are 
documented their 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 uh ROMs are dumped at least. Other than like weird bootleg versions and like early versions and stuff like that. Um so like from the point of view of from the point of view of a person whose primary interest is in preserving and using games, I recommend against buying the games themselves. Now, if it's like, hey, here's a <laughs> here's a box of a thousand SFC carts, like SFC dev carts that have unknown contents, then, like, <laughs> yeah, get that, buy that. <laughs> Immediately. Because who knows what you'll get, right? Maybe you'll find a weird SFC port of, uh, of Vasm on there. <laughs> uh, but otherwise, the, I, I say the, um, the better goal is to, uh, to further, further preservation so the games may always be played. Um, a good example of that is, you know, go, go pick up a, uh, go pick up a copy of triple play 96 and help somebody, help somebody figure out how to dump it properly. So it can be played, you know, a hundred years from now when like all the carts have been destroyed <laughs> and, and there's only the dumped version left, right? Maybe, uh, maybe somebody needs a, a cleaner dump of it because the, the one out there currently doesn't work. But, like, it's Triple Play 96. Nobody gives a shit about Triple Play 96 except, like, Goaty. <laughs> like, Sharpie. But again, like owning the carts just to have, that's a that's a personal preference thing. If you uh, oh, is that a troll? Is it regenerating? Is that what's going on here? Interesting. They they did the thing where you can only kill a troll with acid. Why, why is why is any Super Famicom game over a thousand dollars? Right? Any anyone that's not like anyone that's not like a, an extreme rarity with with um, some sort of specific provenance, right? It needs it needs provenance to be worth anything. But it's like, like, you, you can play the game today. You can play the game on a fucking, on an emulator. You can play it on a real SNES. Um, like, there's, th I don't know. I, I don't think owning, I don't think owning a physical cart of something, the cart itself specifically, is worth anything. Everything else in the box, except for the cart, everything else in the box is the thing, is the stuff that carries value, right? All the doodads and the, the stuff you can hold. Because, because that stuff, that stuff actually makes a difference. Well, so here's the thing. Here's the thing about a massive crazy laser disc collection is that much of the stuff on 
laser disc number one that content just doesn't exist elsewhere not in the same form those versions are unique in a lot of cases um so yes laser discs are something that fascinate me um in addition yeah like there's this huge um there's this like huge amount of i don't know stuff with a laser disc that like you um exactly there's like all this shit so the thing you should do with your laser discs is dump them however that's possible i don't know i don't know i don't know the first thing about laser disc preservation um yeah <laughs> Because nobody can play them. Nobody can play laser discs. Um, but if you if you have the means to get in contact with a, like a preservation society, um, or you have the means yourself, then absolutely please please preserve the contents. <laughs> oh, we've all we've all heard my Evangelion rant before it's just it's it's an unlikable series that people like to mentally masturbate to <laughs> everyone knows that evangelion guy oh man the kanata cover the evangelion theme that's pretty good <laughs> like the uh the thing about Evangelion is <laughs> great. <laughs> the thing about Evangelion is like it uh, it has Michael Bay levels of like cool robot fights to like oh, examine an idol, a very old dragon idol. There's a decorative stone in one eye socket, but the other socket is empty. Um, it has Michael Bay levels of like giant giant robot fighting to like people whining about teen angst so it's it just it's i'm sure it's great for a lot of people who watched it as like teens and really identified with it and thought it was extremely deep but it's boring <laughs> tarchan looks amazing Yeah, that's the that's the problem, right? Is that like the giant robot stuff in Evangelion is cool as hell. It's less than ten percent of the fucking series. <laughs> Found a decorative stone. An old drop this decorative stone. While not a magical gem, the precious stone is carved into the likeness of a reptilian eye. <laughs> it's It's the same, you know, like, Evangelion has the same problem with that, that I have with, like, um, I, 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 saw, I saw this conversation happening, uh, happening elsewhere that, like, uh, you place the decorative stone in the empty socket and suddenly hear the sound of grinding rock in the distance. Um... That, like, uh, what's the, what's the thing? That, like, the, uh, fan interpretations of Dark Souls lore are, like, extremely boring. <laughs> because it's, like, it's, like, oh, here's, uh. Let me show you how deep this this thing is, this piece of media is, by explaining it to you in the most shallow way possible. Um, and I think, like, Evangelion is kind of that because there's, like, there's just, there's a lot ascribed to it. And I haven't looked into it too deeply, but... Like, either the creator of Evangelion 
is a huge jerk off and talks about it constantly in interviews, which would be bad. Or they're mysterious about it, and most of the stuff that people assign to it is uh, is based on content in the series itself, which is purposefully mysterious. So it's like it's been around for long enough that like you get what was it that it was like some bullshit with like a retranslation of it, and they're like, oh, well, like fans are real mad about this thing happening, and it's like, why? Because like you liked this. You like this particular translation of something that, like, was or wasn't um, clear <laughs> in the original in, in Japanese? Like, the translation might have not been accurate to begin with, but you don't like the, uh, you don't like the, the, um, specific <laughs> yeah, Wild Bill translations of Evangelion. That'd be a good, that'd be a good thing to exist. Um... It's weird. There's, there's some. <laughs> I'm I'm torn right now between saying anim or Japanimation, <laughs> just to just to incite riot. But um, yeah, there you go. See, like the the dude who made it hates his fans. Perfect. That, that's that's exactly why. <laughs> that's exactly why I don't like Evangelion is because of like the amount that like fans have. Uh, <laughs> violent porn cartoons, yeah. Um, although there are plenty of violent porn cartoons from areas outside of Japan. I think, um, like, Finland probably has a, a wealth of those, but I've never seen them. But here's the problem, though, is that, like, I don't, I don't like Evangelion for, uh, I don't like Evangelion for reasons that are personal to me it's not a format of show that i enjoy um it's it's a it's a slow i haven't the energy it's a it's a like it's a slow drama and any parts of it that happen to have giant robot fighting in it are few and far between they're cool, but like to me, it's like wings of honey mustard or whatever that fucking uh, thing is. That's just like it's like fucking it's beautifully animated, but it's boring as shit. Fuck, I don't want to watch that movie, anime or not. <laughs> like it's just boring. <laughs> honey mayonnaise. <laughs> um. It was just boring. It, it, it wasn't an interesting. Uh, it wasn't an interesting movie to me. Um, and like, it's kind of you see kind of the same thing with like, um, was it Macaw's complaints about? Uh, uh, what's it called? Um, Jinro. Like, Jinro is slow. It's a slow drama, right? Like. Not everybody likes that. Not everybody wants to, like, stick around for a super-duper slow thing that, that doesn't gain anything by being, uh, by being animated, right? Like, um, I think there's some incredibly cool parts of... of uh, there's some incredibly cool parts of Jinro, but overall, it's a slow... Kind of boring. Uh... It's a it's a slow kind of boring drama, right? And not everybody's gonna like that. I found Jinro to be fine. It was enjoyable. I thought it I thought it had a, an interesting story to tell, and it told it kind of well. But it was not like it was not an action movie <laughs> for, by any stretch. Um. So that's kind of the problem that I have is that like uh, Evangelion is of a type of media that whether um, whether it was animated or not, I wouldn't particularly like it. Um, let's see, what do I like though? Um, I thought that the. Uh, What's that thing? It's like three short stories. 
together. Uh, magnetic Rose, um, Gas Man, and uh, the third one. I can't remember right now. <laughs> uh, let's see. An ambush. You are ambushed by marauding band of Ettons and Hobgoblins while traveling through the Forest of Worms to Liren's Hold. You must fight your way out. Memories. There you go. Yeah, memories. I like memories. I think memories is really good. Look, look at this guy. It's too bad. Get fucked. He has the same amount of hit points as a wolf. But, uh... I don't know. I, Ghibli stuff has really good animation, but again, it's not... I don't know. I've never been particularly attracted to the stories. Um, the, like, Ghibli stories. You know what's a great anime, though? Is, um... Is, uh... Titan AE. That's a great anime. The only problem with Titan AE is that it's basically just it's basically just a remake. It's a fucking remake of uh What the fuck is that? What the fuck is that thing from the 80s? Um shit. Uh what's it called? The one with the, where the guy has like the the holographic wristwatch. The fuck is the name of that thing? No, oh, not Dick Tracy, goddammit. Oh, fucking... Stop stop pulling my act on me. Wrong way! You must follow the path to reach Liren's old. <laughs> no, the fucking... The, the 80s anime, it's like... I don't know, 87 or something? And the guy has a holographic wristwatch? And that's like a huge, huge part of the show? Not the show, the... the fucking movie. No, not the Giver starring fucking uh, Mark Hamill. Speaking of Area 88, who, who here knows the um, who here knows the uh, The part of the Area 88 Super Nintendo game where it plays Chocolate Rain. Lensman, that's it. Yeah. Continue to Liren's Hold. All right. We don't want to continue to Liren's Hold. We want to kill everything first. It is Lensman. So Titan AE is basically just a, a remake of Lensman as far as I can tell. I'm not sure how I came to that conclusion, but it's probably the same way I came to the conclusion that, like, um... Uh... It's probably the same way that I came to the conclusion that um, the uh, first Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie has a scene that is a direct, like, shot-for-shot -shot recreation of the Pleasure Island scene from the animated Pinocchio. That's the map screen, right? Chocolate Rain is on the map screen for uh, Area 88. But yeah, Lensman was uh, almost identical I plot to uh, he must also seek the orb of thunder. Oh, that meddling <laughs> Harper. Lensman is almost identical plot to uh, Titan A. E. Of course, I'm certain he feels the same about me. Slave us. I don't care how you deal with any adventurers you come across, but get the orb. It's crucial to the success of the greater plan. Consider the deed done, Master. I will bring the orb to Darkhold when I have it. <laughs> That's funny, Dana. Uh, I've never seen Los Angeles Blue Girl. Although I probably should someday, because it's about the city I live in.
I'm sure it's a I'm sure it's an accurate depiction of the city. Yeah, Lensman Lensman was definitely long and kind of crappy, but it's the same plot as uh as Titan AE. I had like Um, I had like a weird, I had weird access to anime when I was like a teenager. I want to say kid because like, I'm, fuck, I'm still a kid, but, um, like, what the fuck, what were the, what was, what was available? I had like, um, Yoma, Curse of the Undead. I had, um, there was a video store that had like a few tapes. Um, they had Ninja Scroll, of course, because everyone had Ninja Scroll. That was the like the big one. Um, this was this was back when this shit was on VHS, and like they probably paid hundreds of dollars for these tapes. Um, and uh, they had fucking I want to say like Dark Side Blues or something, which I remember there was a specific scene in that which I thought was really fucking cool, which was there was like a. A baby carriage? There's like a woman pushing a baby carriage. And then, um... I just killed a table. Uh, and then, like, the baby in the carriage turns into a giant missile launcher or something. I mean, they still do, right? That's, that's what it's called. I mean, they mostly call it that in Japan, though. I once... So, here's a great thing. I once taught a... a I won't say taught, right? I shared this joke with a uh, with a Japanese friend of mine, and uh, he thought it was absolutely hilarious. So he said he would continue propagating it, which is um, like. So he worked at a bar, and like weebs from. Uh, it was a karaoke bar, and weebs from, like, um, whatever the fucking college is downtown, USC, weebs from USC would come in all the time to do karaoke, and I was like, I was like, hey man, check this out, if anyone ever asks you about anime, correct their pronunciation, tell them it's supposed to be pronounced anim, and that it's... It's romanized that way to help English speakers pronounce it correctly. And then like write out the write out the kana for anaim. <laughs> I mean like this is how it's spelled in Japanese, see? <laughs> he was like he's like, this is a great idea. I'm gonna do this. And I I hope that uh, I hope that to this day he uh Yeah. I hope that he um I hope that he continues to propagate that joke because <laughs> it's, it's hilarious to, to think that that, that that occurs. Okay. Enter Liren's Observatory. <laughs> ah. Well, you know, the silent view, glottal stop. <clears throat> But, uh, yeah, so that's, that, I find that, I find that funny. Every time I think about, um, every time I think about, uh, and I'm, oh, uh, Dana, if you want some Isekai trash, uh, why don't you watch the original Isekai and I'm Dungeons and Dragons. I kind of don't know what's going on in this place. I have the DVD set of Dungeons and Dragons as well. <laughs> Dude, the fucking... The ending of the Dungeons and Dragons anime is, uh... Is incredible. 
when they like when they had the remaining budget for a whole season and they were like hey your season got canceled this is your last episode and so they just blew the whole budget on the one fucking <laughs> on the one scene the one explosion Magical polyhedral dice. Yeah, so there's one explosion at the end that's really fucking cool that they outsource to, like, their, um... The Korean Animation Studio, I want to say, that was handling it at the time. And they were like, just go nuts. You can, you can do all the fucking shit in it. Um, what shit? No, I didn't want to go to Liren's Hold 2. And now it's a cutscene. Oh, what? It was a cutscene of, like, a library. Can I go back now? Yeah, first level. Tobor! Welcome. How was your sword hiring adventure? What should you watch first when your projector shows up tomorrow? It's a good question. It's a good question. Busty and buttery. Evangelion bike horns. It's a good suggestion. It's a good suggestion. You should watch one of those, um... One of those laser discs that, um... The door is locked. The door to lay... Liren's cellar is magically sealed. There must be something you need to do first. Right. My god, that's fantastic. And K, okay, welcome. Welcome, Raiders. 89 Raiders. Welcome to the Duke Donuts stream. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Oh, man. Cobra. Oh, God, that's fantastic. Abs Nerdy, thank you for the host. Welcome, everyone. We're playing Nude Dwarf Game 2. Nude Elf Game. Elves are a proud and noble race. We're talking about Anheim. I can hear strange music. It's really eerie here. I feel as if I'm in a strange world. You don't know what's. Darn lots. Very good pronunciation. Very good pronunciation of that. Thank you, Geraint. The Welsh TTS. And thank you for the nine months. No, ten months. Nine months streak. I really appreciate the support. It's good to see you, Anne. Yeah, we're playing uh playing Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance 2. Also known as Nude Dwarf Game 2. Nude Elf Game. Because the dwarf in this game... So here's the elf, right? Here's the elf. She's actually wearing armor. This is how nude she is when she's wearing armor. Um, but uh, the dwarf is always wearing, like, full clothing. Always. Constantly. Alright. So we, gotta, we gotta recall to go sell all of our loot. Gonna sell all of our crap to this uh, merchant. Back, 
Even though we don't need the money, I still can't help but pick up everything. No, we're finally getting like plus three stuff. I guess that's good. Fine half plate boots. We're playing a monk though, so we don't really need to like carry any of this stuff. My shop carries the finest armor and weapons, the work of local master craftsmen as well. As so um Yeah, so we can't we can't play as the dwarf because the dwarf isn't very nude at all. Um, so we, we went with the, uh, the most nude character, which is this dark elf monk we've got here, which I'm pretty happy with. We can punch stuff, which is, which is funny. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This, this game is, is pretty good. This game is very good. The lock won't open. All right. So you do not have the required quote unquote key to enter Liren's observatory. Okay. But yeah, the other good thing about the elf is that we can. <laughs> Holy shit, did you see that? Look at these sick jumps. <laughs> ah, good. The, the falling rate is the same no matter how fast you're moving forward. Yeah, you punch stuff. Um, okay, so I gotta get to one of these things. Is this one maybe? Oh yeah, the the wizardry OVA is great, especially because of their attention to detail, like describing what all the spells are. Okay, Liren Cellar, we can't go in there, so that's the wrong one. Um, we can also run extremely fast because we've got uh, gear that makes us sprint faster, and we. We can move almost faster than the um, data streaming. So, like, you'll see the floor disappear at certain points. Oh, man, Two Worlds. Yeah, Two Worlds had a, uh, had a 360 release. But yeah, this is, a, this is a good game. This is a legitimate good game. It's not even, like... It's not even like, oh, this game, you know, it has this redeeming feature, but the rest of it's, like, all fucked up. This is just a, it's just a good game. It's nice and relaxing to play, too, which is kind of why I like it. We'll go to Liren's Hold second level. It's just a, literally a good game. <laughs> it is. Just punch all these guys to pieces. Yeah, Two Worlds has one of the best speed runs. Getting the getting the end boss killed by uh, by town guards, <laughs> by all the NPCs. Yeah, these are always spikes. It seems like I forgot to pick up the like crap on the ground where I was when I teleported back. You know what, um, you know what, oh look, books, we killed some books. This is an allegory, by the way. Um, so, uh, speaking of, uh, oops. I ran over that, like, fireball launcher. Um, speaking of two worlds, it kind of reminds me, there's a game, there's a game I've been pushing for Makah to play for a while because I want to see how he does in it. It's, um... It's a game made by the, uh... The creator of the, uh... Later Wizardry series. Um... And also Wizards and Warriors on PC. So he is, um... He was responsible for Wizardry 6, 7, and 8... For Wizards and Warriors, which is very similar to Wizardry 8. And, uh... Whoops. Um... I don't think you're supposed to... Whee. 
Um, what was that? Oh, treasure chest. Um, so it's D.W. Bradley, David W. Bradley, and uh, he made a game called Dungeon Lords, and like. Uh, so Dungeon Lords is a third person like hack and slash RPG kind of thing god this fucking trap room this sucks imagine trying to find your way to the bathroom through this Drink some potions. Don't get owned by accident. Wanna like step on some shit. I don't even seem to have very good treasure in them. Um Books take no damage from fire. So So Dungeon Lords is like it's extremely weird game. It's got like, it seems like it has like an, in an incredibly large amount of content, and um, it's weird as hell. <laughs> it's got multiplayer up to like eight players for some reason. Scrolls with 100 HP of health. I like to I like to measure the uh, I like to measure the um, the quantity of reading materials in uh, in hit points. That was over 100 hit points worth of scrolls. Uh, but yeah, um, Dungeon Lords. I want to get Macaw to play Dungeon Lords because it's stupid as hell and like I have no idea if any of the systems in that game actually work. Um, but it's extremely expansive. <laughs> um, and MSX Predator, you say. Tell me about MSX Predator. If I wanted to read, I'd go to school. <laughs> I can't move it. Tell me about it. It's broken. Is it broken in hilarious and good ways? Which I assume it is. Yes. Good. <laughs> Good. I would love to see it. Ooh, press select to level up. Oh, we can get a uh, death blow, which gives us increased critical hit damage. Or, instead of that, we could get... Um, You get crushing blow, which gives us just regular damage. Or more carrying capacity, which doesn't really matter, but we'll get crushing blow. There we go. A full set of crushing blows. Is this a secret door or is this a regular door? Secret door. Crushing bluge. Oh, this is the thing it showed me in the cutscene. You found a key. This key opens the door of the study you are standing in. Good. <laughs> uh, you found something important. One of the ancient scrolls you discover. Uh, the location of Liren's remains. Enter Liren's cellar and destroy them to banish him from the world of the living. Okay. okay enter Liren's cellar. Perhaps that's the thing it wanted me to do first. Uh-oh. Congratulations. I am Liren, and this is my home. This is my home. You were the home. first to find my private study. It's unfortunate that this will be your last great accomplishment of this lifetime. Oh, we got to fight, Liren? Flee, mortal, or die. As oh, he's invincible. He 
he can teleport. But he doesn't yell, TELEPORT, when he teleports. Yeah, I was gonna say, this looks like his, um... Looks like his remains are, are with me there. Fine. Oh, it's respawned some of the enemies. It's, it's spawned new enemies, perhaps? What I want to know is, why do so many buildings in the Forgotten Realms have giant, solid areas? Just solid stone. 400 feet thick. What use could that possibly serve? Did talking to Liren unlock his cellar, do you suppose? Perhaps it did. You just walk right in. Yeah, can you imagine how much... Go no further. You must leave this castle now. I shall not warn you again. Oh, he's doing that. He did the white man's wisdom pose. Uh, I'm not leaving until you've paid for the trouble you've given me. Let me save first, though. like it's such a uh but we have to just run, like fool. Run. you found a journal after thumbing through the dead man's journal one passage catches your eye Lyrin himself seems impervious to all harm he is no normal lich he must have some weakness some way to defeat him i fear though that i shall die before finding it the castle gates have sealed themselves, and it seems there's nowhere I can hide without him finding me. Just hide on the first floor, dude. Oh, is this like... Is this a thing where you just, like, go through this tunnel and it's completely linear and then you find, like, his body at the end? Leave my castle or die, mortal. You have to fight all these guys, uh... With him attacking you constantly, which sucks. Stop it. Oh, can't go there. Run, fool. Run. He is Sinistar. Stop it. Stop it. Flee, mortal, or die, as have all those before you. <laughs> okay, this is the correct way to go. Yeah. Run, coward. Run. Run. Leave my okay. It's actually easier to do this without sprinting most of the time. Because when you sprint, he respawns more frequently. If I remember correctly, you can fall in holes in this one, which is, Run, I think, a, a step backwards from the first one. Falling in holes is not a good feature. And he just teleports to you if you sprint, because he has infinite seventh level spells or whatever teleport is. There we go. Can a lich become immortal by throwing his phylactery to a bag of holding? And presumably if the bag breaks, the phylactery will come out, right? You have gone too far, mortal. Your life will come to an end in this chamber, as did mine. However, I ascended to unlife everlasting here, while naught but the cold, dark sleep of death awaits you leave my castle or die mortal can I just punch this oh he like 
He's like, um, what's his face? The guy from Harry Potter. Where he's made multiple, he's made multiple phylacteries. Flee, mortal, or die, as have all those before you. Okay. Good, which one did that open? Nothing like a, uh... I don't like a good puzzle boss fight. Oh, look how many there are in there. He made like 80 million Horcruxes, though. He shoots a ball at you. He shoots a book at you. He throws the book at you. It's both figuratively and literally. This one. Suppose that opened. Uh, Flee mortal or die, but he being followed. What could they want from me? S four XO. Thank you for the follow. Treasure. I he, like keeps shooting himself with ice storm. Oh, here we go. One of these, one of these ones. He's gonna kill himself with that damn ice storm. You found Liren's hand. Tumbling out of the crushed urn comes Liren's desiccated hand. Head back to Liren's observatory and use the hand to open the door. Oh. He died. Time to time to loot uh time to loot his whole cellar here. I like that he killed himself. He broke the pot with a with a fucking ice storm thing. Or whatever those blue meteors were. Yeah. Ah, flee, mortal, while you still can. Bleh. I'm tired. Wake me later. <laughs> Liches aren't known for their intelligence. <laughs> I may be smart enough to live forever with my phylactery, but gosh, am I clumsy. I've destroyed it by accident. Oh, no. Uh. I guess I can't get in here. Maybe that's not even a room. The map of this area is... Confusing. Uh, how do I get out? Though that's the question. Where's the exit? Ah, there's the exit. My God, that's fantastic. Q, thank you. Thank you for the. Thank you for the host. Welcome everyone. Yeah, we gotta use the hand on the observatory. Oh, we came. We come out a different way than we got in. I see. Never mind the fact that we can just teleport back to town at any time. I just uh I just misspoke phase. I do that sometimes, just get the wrong uh wrong syllable. I have a clumsy mouth. Plus one flawless padded helmet. Of blood that returns five percent melee damage. I receive new shipments free. So <laughs> gummy cube. <laughs> here now. Check back from time to time. I could probably. It would probably be better to 
upgrade like a superior short bow or something. I don't know. My prices are always more than fair, friend. What are you looking for? I wonder. I wonder what I could get the, uh, the damage up to on a bow or something like that. I should probably get rid of some of these. If you need weapons or armor to protect you from someone else's, you come to the right these place. Things? These things. weigh a lot, and we can just buy them again later. Prices are always more than fair, friend. What are you looking for? More than fair. Prices are more than fair. 15. Hold on. We can sell off, like, all of these potions. Uh, in case I need to do stuff later, I guess. It's a good question. I can always get them from my bank character, I guess. Oops. <laughs> yeah, what do they sell? They sell... They don't sell one of the things, I think. I don't know. I, don't know. I should just sell off all the shit. Oh, man. Remember when... Uh... Yeah, his prices are more than is fair. <laughs> Remember when they put um, individual merchants gold limits in Oblivion? So you'd have to find a merchant with a lot of gold if you wanted to sell a uh, if you wanted to sell an item that cost a lot. You'd have to find a merchant with lots of gold. And the merchants that had a lot of gold also s bought items for less. Uh, I think I'm at the maximum for now, Raccoon. I have, I have bought my way out of... I've bought as much experience as I can buy. Um, I think. We can check that next time we're in town, which will be right after this. Game has been saved. <laughs> yeah, I've got... Uh, if I ever need money... If I ever need money, I've got um, my bank character, who's the shirtless moon elf necromancer. Um, he's got... Uh, he's got, like... S several... Several hundred thousand, uh, several hundred thousand, uh, gold worth of magic items. What's this? Examine Liren's weather machine. Okay. Yeah, tr trust fund elf. <laughs> um, he's got several hundred thousand gold worth of magic items that I can just get out of him at any time. You remove the orb of thunder and engraved copper sphere studded with enormous topazes from Liren's weather machine. It should be returned to Jarek in Baldur's Gate. Oh, oh no. Enemies. Give oh shit. Give us the orb of thunder. We are many with sharp blades and skins of iron, and you are so few. Leave the orb and go. Uh, who are you and why do you want it? Like you, Slavis seeks the orb for a master. But your master reeks of ill fortune. Did you not know this? Those who aid him die. Uh, what do you mean? Slavis means just what is spoken. 
Those who served Jerex soon fall, much like the three that preceded you. They vanished with the Black Tower. You should choose who you serve more carefully. Enough. I won't surrender the orb to you or anyone else. Then you must perish. Attack them. Attack them. Buddy, do you know... Do you know what's going on here? Do you even... You just melted. I hit you so hard you melted. Fuck's sake. <laughs> Cannot recall from here. Okay. We have to go back down the stairs to recall. <laughs> can we recall now? Yes, we can. No? Can we? There we go. <laughs> fucking melted him with a barrage of punches he had hold on what level what level would a lizard man have to be if you gave it class levels what level would it have to be to have like 500 hit points like that guy did like he'd have to be like level 40 or something right this should be based on 3rd edition? I think it's 3rd edition? I think this was before 3.5. Because 3.5 they started in... Um, I've been supplying brave adventurers for over a decade. I think Neverwinter Nights 2 was the first 3.5 game, I want to say. All right, we got a bunch of trash we got to sell. Fine full plate boots. Seeking arms and armor? I have everything you need. Right God, this here. would be so good. How much? We could get that up to like 18 something. What's my unarmed damage right now? 46 to 62. All right, we're not going to be able to get We're not going to be able to get any normal weapon up to that. What could they want from me? Red Switch, thank you for the follow. Fine Morning Star, we can We can do. Wasn't uh wasn't Neverwinter Nights 1 after Temple of Elemental Evil? The Temple of Elemental Evil I think was on 3.0 as well. Neverwinter Nights 1, Temple of Elemental Evil. Uh, there were a few games that were based on the 3.0. 3 or at least a reduced set of 3.5 that didn't include stuff. Yeah, Neverwinter Nights 1 was 3.0. Um, was it before or after Tele Temple of Elemental Evil? I thought Elemental Evil was first. Oh, Temple was 2003. I keep thinking that Temple of Elemental Welcome Evil was, back, like, friend. way earlier than it was. What what game am I thinking of that came, like, in between Icewind Dale and Neverwinter Nights? <coughs> you know what it could be? You know what it could be? Neverwinter Nights. If Neverwinter Nights was initially released in 2002 and Temple was in um, 2003... Then the follow-up campaigns and like the gold, like the gold, platinum, and diamond editions of Neverwinter Nights would have been uh, would have been after. I don't need that fine crossbow. I can I can do better than that. Go back in here. Temple of Elemental Evil was 3.5. Yeah, Pool of Radiance. Assault on Myth Draenor might be the one that I keep thinking of. Is that... 
Okay, okay. Bear with me here. See the shadow in the fireplace up at the top of the screen right now? I keep looking at that. I'm like... First, I thought it was like a like meat on a spit that was spinning way too fast. Then I thought it was like a bird flying over the woman's head, but then if you move closer, you can see it's like it's just the fire texture. Yeah, inside the fireplace. <laughs> I thought it was like just a like super fast spinning piece of meat for some reason. <laughs> And yeah, these were these were based on the 3.0 rule set, as far as I know. Um, but they're like not exactly Dungeons and Dragons. Um, Greetings again, adventurer. I trust things are going well for you. Okay, we can't talk to her to complete the quest. Well met again, adventurer. I've heard little. She hasn't heard anything. Um, but. I like to compare the amount of HP that enemies have because it's it's an easy metric, right? It's an easy metric to figure out that like, okay, this creature has um, this creature has this many HP. How far off from real D and D rules is that? Is my is my um, Is is my like my um, my metric for for c comparison? So it's always funny to see like okay, I just killed a lizard man who had like five hundred HP or more possibly. Um, so what is that? How how would you how would you accomplish that? <laughs> how would you how would you accomplish a lizard man with like several hundred HP? Um, <laughs> how would you accomplish a lizard man with several hundred hit points in the uh, in the the game itself or in the tabletop rules? How would you do that? You'd need to like, um, you'd probably need to give him class levels, right? I assume that's the easiest, most direct route from like. Regular lizard man to. Well, even like, yeah, in third edition, you have more HP, but it's like. You could get up to a couple of hundred when you got to epic epic levels by that point, I think. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, he had he had wizard spells, too. So at best, I'm guessing like sorcerer or bard would give him wizard spells. Uh to get up there I see you survived Liran's hold and recovered the orb impressive your reward is well deserved here except reward I like to think that all the green text is text that my character is speaking out loud 2,000 gold coins 4,000 experience I was ambushed by black armored men led by a lizard man who had a thousand hit points. Yes, the Zentarum. I'd hope we'd be working too quickly for them to interfere. I'll raise the reward on future missions to reflect the increased risk. Who are the Zentarum? Weren't weren't the Zentarum broken up when their leadership was killed by blue bonded adventurers in uh, the late 1980s? The Black Network began as a group of powerful merchants, but now their ranks include assassins, spies, and an army. They're a powerful political organization with the backing of the Church of Bane, the diabolical god of strife and hatred. Uh, Dana, don't forget that there were two Ravenloft games made by, uh, the, um, what the hell is the name of those guys? They used to be Event Horizon and they were something else. The Menzo Baranzan people. What, uh... What is 
the name of the what is the name of that group? That did Anvil of Dawn as well, right? They did Anvil of Dawn. Dreamforge. Yeah, Dreamforge. So uh Dreamforge was originally uh, Event Horizon, who worked as a developer for SSI. Um, as far as I know, it's mostly the same folks uh, from Event Horizon who worked on the later games and who worked on uh, Veil of Darkness and the summoning as well. And you can kind of see a direct line between um, the summoning... Veil of Darkness, and uh, Anvil of Dawn, uh, with their like absolutely insane <laughs> puzzle design, and like individual weights of rocks for pressure plates that you have to like put all your rocks in a bag, and then like put twenty three kilograms of rocks onto the pressure plate. They also did. Um, Menzo Baranzan, which um, Menzo Baranzan was a huge disappointment to me. And that was like, um, that was the point at which I stopped buying uh, CRPGs for a long time. <laughs> because it was like, it was a culmination of like, extremely low production value in terms of performance and gameplay. Plus, like, extremely silly opening animations. That fucking ice worm fight animation. Um, combined with just bottom of the barrel drizzed level writing. Um, so it was like, well, okay. I guess computer games are going this way for a while. I'll come back later and see how they've fared. Anyway, let's see. Uh, the Black Network. This guy talks about stuff. More! The Zentarum are always looking to collect objects of power. No doubt their spies have sniffed out our purpose, and now they look to steal the artifacts for their own. You'd mentioned other artifacts? There were four in total, including the orb. I also seek the Jade Octahedron, the Brazier of Eternal Flame, and the Oceanic Urn. Uh, it's pronounced Brazier, dude. More. Tell me about the Jade Octahedron. Do fights take place there? The Jade Octahedron, an eight-sided rune stone the size of a troll's fist, is located in the halls of the Hammer, an abandoned dwarf stronghold across the High Moor. I'll return when I have the Jade Octahedron. Farewell. Have you recovered the Jade? Okay, so you just pick one and then you go on that. We're going on that quest now. Because we have the, um... Yeah, yeah, that's that's the thing, right? Like, like the the I game starts out with your you. characters. It's not even, it's not even a dragon, right? It's like some kind of, like... Worm thing? Ice worm thing? It doesn't look like a dragon. It looks like a piece of shit. <laughs> Okay, now that we've got the new quest, we might be able to get new rumors um, from these people. We might be able to spend more money for experience. Uh, now, we're full on experience to money conversion. I mean, money to experience conversion. Greetings again, adventure. You know what one of my favorite... Uh, mechanics in early D D is the um well medic i've heard little only the, the uh s level drain for creating magic items <laughs> yes ha. we're like you want to create a magic item you're gonna have to spend this much experience these experience points on creating the magic item Oh yeah, there's Constitution Drain as well. There's Constitution Drain as well, or a chance for it. Um, 
Not just level drain monsters. That's that's one thing. That's one thing where the monster steals your experience. You. But no, if you create magic items, you have to pay the experience point cost of the. Uh, you have to pay the experience point cost of the item to create it. There was a yeah yeah yeah. I think it was. Um, Permanency had a constitution cost for certain uh, applications of the spell. And, like, people were writing into Dragon Magazine about how to get around that. Oh, man, abusing level drain in Bard's Tale games. You know. <laughs> yeah, the, the raver gloves. Oh, what do we got? We've got go to the halls of the hammer one. Let's go. Um, I wish that the fast loader version of Centauri Alliance fucking worked. For me, it doesn't. <laughs> Dana, can you try loading that on whatever you have set up and see if it works? Yeah, there's um am, am I am I am I wrong in in remembering here but um Final Fantasy Tactics required you to do like level drain stuff to make overpowered characters as well. I mean like it wasn't required to beat the game, but it was like if you wanted to make a really sick character, that's what you did. Uh, Centauri Alliance, Dana. The, the Game Base 64 version of it that has the fast loader. I wanted to make... I realized how fucking onerous this would be. Because it's like... Because of the way Final Fantasy Tactics is set up. I think it's Final Fantasy Tactics. Maybe I'm thinking of another game. Um, but I wanted to make an all handbag party. Party that used exclusively, uh, exclusively handbags. But, like, the process to get the good handbags was, like, super long. And, like, the process to level them up in such a way that, level your characters up in such a way that they'd be, like, able to use them well was also super long and involved. You've driven the troglodytes off. I am Landon, and owe you my thanks. Alas, if you'd only come sooner. What's happened here? Troglodytes. I'd heard there were raiders on the moor, but so many. They must be based in Brigand's Hold. My lord and Lady Cadmere were traveling back to Baldur's Gate from Waterdeep. The wagon was attacked. I believe all the other guards are dead. I saw Lady Cadmere being carried off over one of the brute's shoulders. I do not know what happened to my lord. Will you help them? Perhaps, but why should I? Lady Cadmere is a high magistrate in the city, and her husband a wealthy landowner. There's no doubt you'd be rewarded. I'll help then. Where is this brigand's hold? Several miles west of here. A ruined keep and village. There's little left on the surface, but there's supposed to be an extensive network of cellars and dungeons below ground. Bandits often use the place to hole up. More. I'll mark it on your map. I'm in no condition to fight, so I'll check my fallen companions for survivors and continue down the road for help. Farewell. Farewell. He's marked it on my map. Yeah, in, uh, in Final Fantasy Tactics, you can use a handbag as a weapon. In the original game, handbags weren't, like, very good. But in the, uh, the War of Lions version for PlayStation Portable, <clears throat> they added a bunch of special handbags that you get by doing... Hunting? 
Yeah, just it, it, it gives a syntax error on load. I wonder what's different. I wonder what's different. Maybe it's the way that I'm loading the PRG or something. In bag video, what is this dot? Uh oh. Okay, I can't like, I can't reasonably click this. <laughs> it looks like a quality video. I'm not gonna watch it on stream, but I'm, I'm gonna, ho I'm gonna hover over it and like, see what it looks like. See what the, see what the thumbnail looks like. Oh, I gotta click back on chatty so I can actually see. I'm gonna have chat like within, within eye shot. While I'm, while I'm playing. Are these troglodytes? They look like, they look like lizard kobolds. world map. It's your world map. There we go. Brigands ruins. Let's go. But yeah, Centauri Alliance looks like a cool ass fucking game. It's basically Bard's Tale in space. And it's all like it's all Apple II graphics but on Commodore. It still looks really good though. Animations are really high quality. It doesn't have any um doesn't have any music though, which is unfortunate. Presumably because it was made for uh, Apple II first. And I just poured it over. Now I gotta wonder, like, how many games, how many, like, how many weird RPGs do you think there are for uh, for the Apple II just out there that, that, like, never get seen because they have... Apple II graphics and no music. And they're probably all like Bard's Tale or Wizardry clones. There's got to be some interesting stuff out there, right? Uh, the layout or the um, the layout of the levels in this game are a little less interesting, I think, than um, than in the first the first game. Love that they put a book on a stand out in the middle of the wilderness like this. Very good. There's also like these weird gas traps that seem to be popping up randomly. Or like maybe it's just my character like occasionally farting. Ooh, level up. We could get better armor proficiency so we can see what our character looks like in scale and uh, scale and plate bikinis. Uh, get more poison and acid resistance, more weight carrying. That's kind of good. 
Hand weapon focus isn't very good. Long weapon focus isn't very good. Um, try leveling up sprint and see if it does anything good. Two weapon fighting. <clears throat> Accuracy only affects uh, ranged weapons, though, for the damage bonus. It's only for ranged attacks. Oh, piercing strike. Is that a... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here we go. We want piercing strike and then death blow. It reduces your enemy's armor class. Block, 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 block. <laughs> Good. Still, we're doing like... 150 damage on a crit now. 144 damage. So that's good. 170 damage. I think the plus to damage that Deathblow gives isn't flat. I think it's actually I think it's actually like percentage based. But look at this. Like, that guy had over 200 HP. I'm like 100 and 190 HP damage on that guy. So like, can you imagine if you weren't... If you weren't exploiting this game... If you weren't exploiting the game by this point, imagine how long you would have to just wail on these guys to kill them. To kill each one of them. <laughs> It would take so goddamn long. <laughs> You'd be like, oh, I do like, say I did like 30 HP damage per hit average. Hello, Alpalpaca. Did I read that right? Alpalpaca. Hello, welcome. That brigands ruins, yes. <clears throat> <laughs> so, but it, that's the thing, right? Is that in real D&D, &D, these guys have what? Like 30 HP or something? Somebody look up a uh, third edition. Third edition troglodyte. HP. So, you know, fuck it. I can look it up. I've got, I've got the books. I've got the books. I can look it up. Let's have a look. Harvester. Let's see here. Where is it? Uh, documents. Uh, rule books. Do I have third edition? I have 3.5. I have 3.5. That should be this good enough. Serves Monster purpose. manual. Uh, Monster manual 3.5. Here we go. Under T. Probably find the troglodyte, right? Tarask. Tendriculos, Tojanda, Triton, Trient, Troglodyte. 2d8 plus 4, 13 hit points. Thirteen hit points. Yeah, so, these guys are supposed to have 13 hit points. They have... They have more than 180 hit points. The 168 damage. And he was still alive. So... Um... They have more than like 10 times, they have more than 10 times the, uh, the HP they're supposed to have. But the weapons are still doing like normal damage, relatively, right? So like, like this battle axe is doing 
way more damage than it should, but not... Like, a battle axe doesn't do one to three damage <laughs> normally, right? <laughs> this does 10 to 30. So they're, like, just stacking up the... the um, they're just stacking up the fucking... Uh, Stacking up the, like, tankiness of the enemies. So the enemies get, like... You get, like, a 25% a or, like, 40% damage bonus. They get a 1,000% or 1,300% damage bonus... Or, uh, HP bonus. So it's, just, it's just this, like, ridiculous scaling. Where, like, what I'm doing right now, it's like... Yep. This is about how many hits it should take. For a, um, what level am I? A level 15 monk to kill a troglodyte. Probably should only take two hits. I would think. Unarmed. What does a, what does a level 15 monk have for, like, damage output? What, do you, what would you think for that? Probably a decent amount, right? Unarmed. <clears throat> They'd have like improved and improved unarmed and like a whole bunch of bonus feats and shit about unarmed. Yeah, the damage gets crazy. Not not as crazy as the um not as crazy as the dual comma wielding monks in uh, Neverwinter Nights 2. <laughs> oh, that's fine. That's fine. All kinds of things block chat. I think the grimoire might even block it more. Yeah, they're they're uh, 2d8, 2d8 plus four is a troglodyte in regular D and D. Yeah, nobody gives a shit about chat. You only need like the tiniest, the tiniest little bit of chat. <laughs> oh man, the mega troglodyte wasn't any sturdier though. Yeah, the bag of holding contains some interesting stuff. The problem with AoE in this game is, uh, 1d20 at 16, 1d12. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, two or two or three hits should take. Not, if I didn't have all this shit, it would be, like, 20? I assume I assume it's 1d12. I assume that was a typo that at 5. Um, I don't think at level 5 you'd be doing 1d12 as a monk. <laughs> that seems excessive. Enter Brigand's Hall. Yeah. <laughs> Typing preview. Typing preview is as long as chat needs to be on stream. So the the problem with um, AOE abilities in this game is that all of the AOE abilities are um, fixed damage. They're not based on your weapon damage. So like they're like pointless to use. Yeah, they're like, um, yeah, what is the, what is the one called that's like, um, Stunning Blow does like a specific amount of damage. I guess this maybe, 
Plus one damage. Sweep. Sweep attack. We'll try that. We'll try that. Try sweep attack when we get uh, into our next level. Troglodytes were, uh... I thought troglodytes were supposed to be, like... Weird, like, half... Like... Not lizard men, but, like... Weird, like... Kind of cavemen-like guys? Maybe I'm confusing the, like... General term troglodyte with D&D-specific troglodytes. We're in the we're in the area of like extremely dangerous exploding uh, exploding barrels. I need to get that deflect missiles. Down. Yeah, love a game with like a with like a completely broken damage formula. So like some weirdo attack does like a million damage. Oh, there's a There's an exploding barrel. They're extremely dangerous now cuz they do like How many hit points do I have? They do like 150 damage or something or like 100 damage. Can you imagine an exploding barrel that did a hundred damage in Dungeons and Dragons? How cool would that be? It'd be so big. I mean, basically every dungeon is Tomb of Horrors at this point. Yeah, there's that barrel. Let's see. Yeah, it did a third of my HP, and I have 225... Uh, I have 225... I have 225 HP, and it did, like, a third of my health? So whatever that boils down to, it's like... 70-something? <laughs> Yeah, I'm curious what kind of alchemical gunpowder, magical alchemical gunpowder they've stored in that barrel. Also, considering it does 100 HP of damage, how does it not have some kind of some kind of effect on the wall nearby? What what kind of uh, material are these walls made out of? something in here? Oh, I just didn't get close enough for the wall to the wall for it to, uh... Wasn't... I kind of think, but, like, I know at least in the... the, um... Earlier D&D versions, the, like, staff, breaking a staff of power was, like, absolutely pointless. Unless it had, like, unless you had spent, like, a really long time, uh... Sar Sarkat. Let's go over here. 
Unless you spend like a really long time just pumping spells into the staff. All right, this guy's a wizard. Start counting the HP. It's seven. Hey now, buddy. I don't know how you did that much damage. You found a key. It may be the key to wherever Lady Cadmir is held. So, um... I didn't count fully, but we did something like... 30 attacks? 20 to 30 attacks? I counted 14, and then I did like a... A flurry of blows. And the attacks were doing, it seemed like an average of uh, maybe 50 damage. It was like, there were maybe like one third crits and, uh, it was maybe one third crits and like half of them were 50. Half the crits were like 80 or 150. And some of them were 25. You rescued a prisoner. You saved Lady Cadmir from the depredations of her troglodyte captors. You get 4,000 gold coins. You get a plus one grand keen amulet. You gain 2,000 experience points. So now we want to recall back to town. Yeah, she disappears. She could have teleported out at any time. Oh, she chose not to. Welcome back. I received new shipments frequently, so if you don't see something here now, check back from time to time. Got a got an amulet that's plus one wisdom. What a good what a good item for a monk to have in this version of the game. My prices are always more than fair, friend. What are you looking for? Your flawless is like actually good. Imperial studded leather boots, grand padded boots, one armor class. A superior morning star, twenty to thirty damage is is not bad, but uh Yeah, it's <laughs> he magically summons the shop. It's just a it's just a cardboard facade with it painted on. Yeah, twenty to thirty is not bad, but it's also like half of what our unarmed stuff does right now. My shot. The work of local master craftsmen <laughs> as well as imports from Waterdeep and on. We're done talking to him for now. Yeah, we do 46 to 62 damage unarmed right now. <laughs> and um, wisdom gives you ex plus percent experience, and that's it. <laughs> Plus percent experience. We'll be taking uh, strength next time we level up. I should probably take... I guess I can take a point of deflect missiles right now. Even. Deflect missiles is good because you get like... Um... 
you I like do that here. automatically I can't do um that here. I can't do that here. I can't do that. Fuck, I forget what I was going to say. Did did Lady Cadmere come to the bar? That guy conveniently standing in front of the ladder to nowhere. I want to go up the ladder to nowhere. Come on, man. No, Lady Cadmere is nowhere to be found. I can't do that here. I can't do that here. I can't. What about what about the church? We didn't check with this guy. I can't recently. do that here. Greetings again. How might I assist you? Heard any rumors? I have heard of your good works in the city, but nothing more. May Helm watch over you. I can't do that here. It seems strange. It seems strange, right? That that there would be a stat that does only that, but also like there's a stat that just influences your uh, buying and selling prices. <laughs> yeah, that does kind of seem like what they did there. All right, I'm gonna take a. Uh, I'm gonna save the game because that's a good thing to do. Hopefully, they don't need you to like properly leave that place after saving Lady Cadmere to trigger a thing. I'm gonna do that, and I'm gonna I'm gonna take a quick break. Oh. I'm going to take a quick break so that I can play more. Let's get some music going. Turn off the game music. Go to the BRB screen this time. There we go. You can look at the bag of holding while I take my break. But uh, I'll be back shortly.
Get back to the game. I'm back. Let's go. Let's get back. Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance 2. New Dwarf Game 2. Nude Elf Game. Here we go. Ready to continue. How's everyone's Saturday going? I hope everyone's having a good Saturday. I'm having a pretty good Saturday. My car's battery was dead when I tried to run an errand this morning. So I have to charge up a battery pack for it. All right, we can't go back there, so I guess we're, I guess that's pretty much done. I sold off all my crap, right? I think I did. I'm pretty sure I sold all the crap. That's a slime with 300 hit points. This is a very confusing level here. Yeah, low dexterity, right? Don't dwarves have a de dexterity penalty? I think I double stunned that guy. Yeah, look, look how stunned he is. I can stun this guy, like, a lot. Yeah, the Dwarven Rogue in this game is terrible because uh, he wears clothing even if there's no uh, armor equipped. Holy fuck, look at that. 200 damage from a uh, from a slime. 200 damage. Oh, can we... Uh, hold on. Yes! Yes! Good. Instant game over, by the way. Falling in a pit is an instant death, because they are bottomless. <clears throat> That's okay, we just need to go back just very slightly here. Just back to the entrance of this area. Oops. Look how much I can stun this guy. There's so many sets of... So many sets of stars. <laughs> I accidentally made a really good decision. I accidentally made a really good decision. Um, With my weapon set up, where I made, my, I gave myself a an acid-based long-range weapon. What are these things? Are these like, Duragar or something? Gully dwarves. Oh, 
for me. And what did you do? You did the thing. Which thing? Oh, awesome. Awesome. I think they will they will eventually be forced to give it to you. They just have a really annoying policy of being like, yeah. It's, it's you just got to wait for your like your multiple partner rejections and then eventually you'll get it. <laughs> it's, it's uh That's how I've seen it go with everyone else who's become partnered. So You'll definitely get it eventually. Don't be disheartened. You know, do like do like I do. Make a make a celebration of your of your uh, partner rejection milestones. Oh, what a good design for this area. What a good design. Wait, can I just If this is just a giant open area, can I just Booby hot tub streams. It's just a it's just a blue footed booby in a hot tub. I'm pretty sure I'm getting hits on these at some points. It's like Oh shit! Oh shit. Hold on, I have a solution. I have a solution to this problem that I've given myself. <laughs> Ah, what a good, <laughs> what a good thing. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, the halls of the hammer, <laughs> famous for its bottomless pits. <laughs> but look at this, look how far these daggers go. Damn it, I did it again. Oh man, the yeah, bath water is not. I can't do that here. <laughs> probably having a real, uh, having a real like um, slump in the bath water speculation market right now. Okay, okay, I'm not gonna run into the pit again. <laughs> I should, I should save it. I should probably save the game. <laughs> But yeah, I I uh I got my first partner rejection uh back on the 18th and it went it went straight into my spam folder. So I kind of missed it and I didn't do the I was planning on doing a big like big event, a big stream for it. Like first partner rejection milestone stream. And uh I didn't. I forgot to do that. So, uh, but I, I applied again. I applied again. I did a, a, a second application. And so we'll we'll see. I expect that to be rejected in about two weeks. Um, maybe a little. Uh, maybe a little less. Ah, uh, no, it's almost impossible to lose partnership once you get it. You have to be really, really, really fucking dumb. Um, you can commit. You can commit felonies in the state of California and not lose your partnership if you're uh, big enough. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Get through here. Now we got a little space we can stand on. How do you suppose this stuff, like, stays up in these bottomless pits? Uh, there was one very popular streamer who, uh, there was one very popular streamer who, um, filmed a miner in a public restroom 
uh, which is a felony in the state of California. Um, and they're, uh, they got a one month, they got a one month suspension, I think. And then I believe they, um, they settled out of court by, um, effectively bribing the, uh, the person not to, uh, not to press charges, which is technically also illegal, but, um, you know, if you got enough money, the lines of legality are, are a bit different. But no, it is very difficult, very, very difficult to lose, uh, to lose Twitch Partner once you get it. Um, it's far easier to lose affiliates. Status. You, uh, if you do something that would be like a bannable offense, um, they can revoke, can revoke your, uh, your affiliate status completely. When you commit a felony or a criminal offense, um, you aren't supposed to be allowed to settle out of court because you've broken the law. It's like, oh yeah, I murdered that guy, but um, but you know, I can I can pay for it. <laughs> doesn't really, you know, <laughs> doesn't doesn't really hold. Um, right. Right, exactly. Now, that's not saying that, like, it doesn't happen all the time. It does. It does happen all the time, but it's not supposed to happen if there's, like, video evidence of the crime that was broadcast to thousands of people. For example. Um, but also, like, if the, if the people who are affected... Um, if the people who are affected by it don't show up in court, then the, uh, the DA isn't going to try to prosecute that. They have better things to do. So if they're like, hey, yeah, you know, if, uh, if, you, if you agree not to pay, uh, press charges, we'll pay you all this money, that's, you know, that's technically bribery. Um, but... But it's it's that's a bigger that's a bigger discussion about like some real problems in the American criminal justice system. But I digress. Um, the question of is it hard to lose or is it easy to lose uh, Twitch partnership? It is incredibly difficult to lose uh, Twitch partnership once you get it. Um, you got to be real stupid. You gotta be real stupid to lose it. Even if you're not a popular, um, yeah, even if you're not a popular streamer, it's still pretty difficult to, uh, to lose it. Now that that guy's spawned in, can I hit him? I mean, you can be you can be pretty damn racist and still not get banned from the partner program, as long as you're like it was just a joke. Um, you can do you can do all kinds of stuff that sucks and th make make people out or that that are done by terrible people who remain Twitch partners. Yeah, there is a there is a time limit. Uh, through which you can, if you don't stream within a certain time, you can lose affiliate. Um, it is, I believe it's two months. Um, I believe it's two months. But it's like, at their discretion. So it's not like, oh, two months and they turn off your affiliate. It's like, um... It's like, they can decide to turn off your affiliate anytime after two months, but it's like, usually, 
takes like a year, is what I understand. I've never actually seen it in practice. There's, yeah, there's a, um... There's definitely a, uh... What's the word I'm looking for? I would prefer a reasonably, um, it does kind of look like a handlebar mustache, doesn't it? That's good. Um, I would, I would prefer a reasonably, uh, consistently enforced policy than what Twitch does today in either direction. <laughs> As long as it was reasonably consistently Welcome enforced. Um, it currently is not, and I think that's bad for everyone. Um, because it gives... It gives people who should behave better... Uh, it gives them kind of a... Uh, my shop carries the finest armor and weapons. The it gives them an excuse to say, I didn't know any better because a popular person did this and they weren't punished. And so that leads to less popular people imitating the behavior of the more popular folks. And they don't always get away with it, but when they don't get away with it, the fallback is, well, that's because, you know, that's because they're inconsistent about applying their policy, and that's bullshit. And the problem is, not that I did or said something racist, but that Amazon is unfair, right? That's the, that's the fallback. So no one realizes, like, hey, actually, like, the shit you did was pretty fucking reprehensible. Own up to it. You suck. You don't deserve to be streaming on a major corporate platform. And it's, it's, yeah, like, fucking, um, look at what happened with the fucking YouTube dude, that, like, Disney YouTube dude, right? Like, look at the shit that guy did and got away with. And, like, it's, it's insane. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. Hell yeah, Perfect. Perfect. Punch every chest. Um, and I would prefer that there is a... Like... I would prefer that there is a consistently enforced policy that applies to everyone equally, regardless of popularity or money, than either... than what we have today. And in, in either direction, right? It could be a draconian, like, it could be a draconian policy of, like, you say a racist thing on stream, whether it was a joke or accidental or whatever, you're banned. I'm fine with that. You know what? They're, they're putting their foot down and they're saying, like, you know what? Like, this is a, this is a, this is our policy. We don't allow this. That's fine. Um, but yeah, like, it's like, the whole, like, we have an opaque policy that we won't tell you what what is and what isn't acceptable until it's on a case by case ba basis. Like that that just sucks. It sucks for everybody. <laughs> it it creates this atmosphere where like all the small guys are are afraid of you know like doing like it's like oh shit I'm gonna get I'm gonna get banned for a mahjong stream where there's like some you know lewd content because who fucking knows. Um, and, like, uh, I don't know. It, it's, it's a whole thing. Yeah, ex it, <laughs> exactly. And I think that, that's harmful to everyone except the, everyone except the people on the platform who are making money. <laughs> and it, it creates a, it creates a really bad environment. Yeah, it's... I don't know. It's a negative part of a hobby that I really enjoy. And I'd like to... I'd, I'd like to go on... 
ignoring its existence, but it's true. Like, there's a there's a lot of really fucking shitty people out there. <laughs> it sucks. So I just do my best to, uh... You cannot punch the mimics before they attack you. Um, I just want to... I want to play games and have fun with people who are cool about it. <laughs> Not like... Not have to worry about like, oh man, it's like, is this, is this, uh, you know, is this streamer that I, I work with pretty closely? Like, are they secretly a racist? Do I have to worry about this? Are they like secretly a terrible, horrible human being? <laughs> but like, I guess just it's it's a problem that's kind of been around since long before the internet, and it's just like. Fucking! It just used to be a thing that like wasn't addressed, and I'm glad it's getting addressed more now. <laughs> right. I mean, I I say I say I'm a terrible person, and it's like the the reasons behind that. It's like I have to I have to um I have to remind myself of like there are some real real horrible horrible people out there. There's some real fuckers. And I'm not one of them. <laughs> so, I I I I take solace in that. Man, I punch a chest so hard blood comes out. I love video games, folks. Video games are fun. There are a lot of good video games out there. A lot of good games. And there's so many games I want to play. I want to. I want to try out all the all the old weirdo RPGs. The the um. The gold fell too far back on the table. Oh, wait, I can jump. I forgot I can jump. <laughs> I forgot that I can jump. Since the last stream where jumping was necessary. Yeah, I can get this gold on the table. <laughs> Shit, there was gold like back by the entrance, wasn't there? I can't jump up on there. Oh man, Shadow Madness. Shadow Madness. I have played Shadow Madness. The thing about Shadow Madness that's weird to me is, like, it has these crazy fucking animations for literally every spell. Literally every spell. Yeah, they look terrible. They look awful. <laughs> Game is fucked as hell. But God, like, it's so weird. There's also, there's also one musical track in Shadow Madness that reminds me of, um... I forget what the proper, um... I forget what the proper, uh... Yeah, they have no, they have no textures. Um, I forget what the name of the track properly is. I think it's like Logan Rock Witch or something, or Log On Rock Witch uh, is an Aphex Twin song. And there's a track in Shadow Madness in like the weird desert area, the like weird desert plateau stuff area that sounds extremely similar. And uh, I always found that very strange uh, that there was such similarity to what, what, what must be like at that time that would have been like a pretty obscure musical track. But, 
uh, I don't think it's actually the same track. It's just like very reminiscent of it. The like weird like it's like a mouth harp and uh, mouth harp and like steel strings or something. Man, Barkley too. What a, what an odd situation. It kind of goes to show, though, that like, um, it turns out, it turns out, most game designers, developers, are not good business people. <laughs> it's um, a sad fact. <laughs> Super Baseball 2020. Outrun 2020. It didn't come true. One of my... Uh, one of my favorite things... Uh, one of my favorite things to do is when I play a game that's set in its future is to give the, um, the relative date. The date relative to today. <laughs> so, like, um, complex battle scenarios with three styles of magic. Six unique heroes with distinct personalities. Two disc product boasting over 40 hours of epic gameplay. I think, um... Landale played that recently? Not recently, but like several months ago. I think Landale fucking hated it. <laughs> Shadow Madness, that is. Um... Are these? I guess they're like animated Spider-Man plate mail or something. Right? Dwarven centurions. Yeah, Shadow Shadow Madness is a game where like it's it's influence from Final Fantasy is so obvious and yet like there's so much weird stuff in the game. So much weird shit in the game and it's like yeah, like um there's just like Yeah, they look like straight out of 7, but it's like the, the most impressive thing of that game was its world building and like the, the like the shit that was going on in the game the actual plot of the game was interesting everything else in the game was like totally half-assed <laughs> um, this is uh, this is nude dwarf game 2 nude elf game for PlayStation 2 I'm playing it on a real PlayStation 2 um, via OPL, the open PlayStation loader, which loads the game off of an SD card, so I can do stuff like this. Third deep? What? What's the hammer third deep? The problem with Shadow Madness, though, is I, I think, if I, if I recall correctly, Shadow Madness is, like, extremely slow to get going. Um... So it's like, it's not a game, it's not a game that I would want to, uh, that I would want to stream. Ted Woolsey, you know, Ted Woolsey did a really good job, I think, on his translations in a way that, like, in a way that Victor Ireland did exactly the opposite. Durbum's key has unlocked a treasure room. Good. Oh, there's a there's a magical floating s side hammer. I can't pick it up now. Axe? I don't know what that was. Yeah. 
Get back up every time. I think I'm being followed. What could they want from me? Edgar Cabuto, thank you for the follow. I got a, a remarkable wooden shield that I can't use. Durbum, your treasure room sucks. I think, um, like, I think, I think Ted Woolsey did a great job with all of his games. Um, people nitpick a lot of the stuff later, and they're like, oh, it's not as accurate as blah, 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 or, um, you know, they say, like, oh, it wasn't this, it wasn't that. I think Ted Woolsey did an incredible job with his translations, and the games, like, uh, the, um, the games held together, like, really well. Um, Welcome back, friend. My as, carries the finest armor on compared the to, the as compared as to, as compared to how, uh, again, how Victor Ireland approached translation, which was, there's there's literally a video out there of one of the people at um one of the people at working designs saying, "Yeah, we take the whole script and we just throw it out. <laughs> throw out the script and we just replace it with um with pop culture references and stuff like that." And it's like, "Okay, yeah, that's a huge problem. <laughs> that's that's a uh that's a real big problem." <laughs> And, uh, it's, like, what happened, though, what happened was a lot of people were influenced by the manner in which working designs translated their games, I can't right? Do that here. So, there was, they set up this expectation of, um... They set up this expectation of games being stupid as hell. <laughs> and so you end up with, like, a bunch of people who are like, yeah, I remember playing this game when I was 10 and it being stupid as hell. And, like, that's what I expect out of a JRPG is these, like, this stupid bullshit. And then oh, I was supposed to talk to fucking Durbum and see if he says anything about the key. Um, and then that influences, uh, that subsequently influences people who get into doing translation to the point that they start mimicking that in their fan yes. translations and stuff. Ha. So the thing that happens is that like, when do we like, you end up with this subpar translation. And when I say subpar translation, I, I mean do that here. it doesn't convey the information of the original work. Like their their, their problem was that they like they took a script and they just made their own thing. And that's not a successful translation. What's this? Is that a dragon with three heads? Or... I got... Low rent chimera. Oh, is this? Oh, these are all... Yeah, this is... It's a chimera. It's a low rent chimera. Folks, I don't think this is what a chimera is supposed to look like. I think they kind of, like, fucked up. Also, it, it flies constantly, so you literally can't fight it if you're melee. Can I jump attack? No. There are no jump attacks in this game. Okay, it comes down sometimes when you punch it. Okay, good. 
good. Oh, it gets to take off again. We recovered the Jade Octahedron, an eight-sided Jade Runestone from within the Chimera's bowels. It should be returned to Jarek. So, like, here's the thing. Working Designs had some technical competency in, like, making games work at a basic level. Um, and when I say at a basic level, I mean their technical staff was... Did we just get... Did we just get conflicting back-to-back -back <laughs> requests both at the same time? I have a I have a request to open the infinite grimoire and one to uh, one to open the bag of holding back-to-back. -back. <laughs> so let's do this. We'll um we'll open the infinite grimoire for a while. And then we'll uh, we'll switch back. <laughs> and then we'll switch back. Um, but uh, <laughs> I think it I think it, it it causes both of them to like turn inside out or something, and then there's an explosion. Yeah, destroys both. The um. Yeah, it destroys both, but in a different manner than if you do the opposite. All right. I can't do that here. I wonder if there's like some stupid ass scenario where there's like a an automatic trap that uh <laughs> There's like an automatic trap that drops a portable hole into a bag of holding or vice versa. Um. <laughs> Few ever return from the depths of the halls of the hammer and with the jade octahedron besides. Well done. Here is your reward. Accept reward. 3,000 gold and 4,000 experience points. Hmm. Tell me about the Brazier of Eternal Flame of Eternal Flame. The Brazier of Eternal Flame is a wide bronze fire pot studded with sparkling jacinth. It was once in the treasury of Dragonspear Castle, but lies somewhere in the caverns beneath the place now, having been stolen by monsters. More. Oh. I'll return when I have the Brazier of Eternal Flame. Farewell. <laughs> uh oh. Uh oh. An image. What's this image? Arrowhead of total destruction. Mm. Save this. Probably we can't do anything until the new, uh, new uh, chapter. What's the thing? Um, the uh, I think it's third edition and up bucket brigade. Yeah. Yeah, the bucket brigade where you can uh, you can move an infinite amount of water 
in buckets from one end of uh, from one end of a like thing to another. Yeah, horse teleporter, all kinds of all kinds of stupid stuff. <laughs> Skull gourd. Sharp Teeth 2. I guess we already went to Wood of Sharp Teeth 2. You awake in the middle of the night to find your camp overrun by monsters from the nearby Troll Claws. Defend yourself! What's great is if you kill a troll who's affected by acid, um... They become invincible, or they, they the uh, the acid effect wears off instantly. You're supposed to hang your food from trees so the trolls don't get it. There we go, got him. It's also kind of strange that my fixed damage weapon is doing variable amounts of damage. bug. They also continue to regenerate damage from acid. Now there's no, there's no, um, there's, Thacko isn't involved in the amount of damage they take. Thacko is only to hit armor class zero, so you hit or not. But, uh, it's strange that a, a weapon with a fixed amount of damage is dealing variable damage. <laughs> yeah, over 200 damage a hit. Yeah, for my unarmed, uh, you must proceed north to reach Dragon Spear Castle. Um, my unarmed damage is variable, but the critical hits are, like, are good. Go to Troll Claw's Ambush. I like that they make you, they make you leave by the north exit, and then, like, when you do, it goes back to the world map, and you can go in any direction. <laughs> it's good. Good choice. Bonk. I like that trolls have, like, 500 HP in this. A dragon spear, not dragon lance. Oh, Forgotten Realms was first, wasn't it? Before dragon lance. a campaign setting. I kind of forget because I didn't give two shit uh, two shits about novels and like I recall Forgotten Realms existing uh, I recall Forgotten Realms existing when they started ramping up like talk about the um, when they started ramping up talk about Dragonlance modules. So, like... They were... They were talking about the modules, but the, um... The, uh... 
I think Pool of Radiance was already out, or it was already in production. Punch all the things. I am doing my best, Barney. I'm doing my best. Many of the things are unpunchable. Like that goblin sometimes. He blocked. He just blocked 200 HP of damage with his, uh, with his flesh. What's the difference between a pike and an all pike? There you go. Here's a good question. What's the uh, what's the difference between a a jizz arm and a bill jizz arm? What's the difference between a a ransewer and a speedum? I suppose those guys are supposed to be ogres, maybe? Ogres? 400 HP ogre? No, 200 HP ogres? The picture. The picture of the pole arms. Here's a good question to answer. How come, uh... How come everybody mispronounces jizz arm? Yeah, the, uh... The Getty. Getty Museum in Los Angeles. The big one. Um... L. Pike, punk D and D themed musician. Yeah, jizz arm. Everybody mispronounces it with the. Uh, it's what a hard G. Everybody knows it's pronounced properly. It's pronounced jizz arm. It's like how people mispronounce that PlayStation One fighter, Air Jizz. I don't know why. Is. Yeah, yeah, it's German. Yeah, it's German. It means, it means, God bless the ring. In German. There is. You know, I should, I should fucking play through that. that. That's one of those fucked up fighting games that, like, I'm quite certain there's an exploitable tactic to, but I can never quite get it. I can never quite get it. Quirus. I don't get it. Um, like, there's got to be a way to just, like, uh, uh, there's got to be a way to just, like, one move that entire game, but I don't know what it is. I always, like, have to use a second move halfway through. Why are they all dead over here to what? I didn't kill these guys? Why are they dead already? Fall before me.
Oh, I was going to level up. Um, did I end up with enough points to do it? No, because I maxed out uh, something else. Whoops. <laughs> Whoops. Um, we you know, it's a good word. It's a good word. Nuclear. Oh, you're talking about guarding like this? When I press R1, I guard against attacks. Yeah, it's it's a shame that that like um S word. Yeah, I'm not using any S words in this game because uh. They're uh, they're not really as effective as the unarmed combat is for the for the monk. Uh, what was I gonna say? Something about. Oh right, I'm I'm disappointed that after like. Pool of Radiance and a little bit, say a little bit of Curse of the Azure Bonds. Um, they stopped putting the funny, weird polyerms into games. And it was just like, okay, yeah, like Spear and whatever. They like reduced it to the most effective weapons and pretty much nothing else. <laughs> Oh, no, I'm not a history professor pr professor by profession. I am a uh, that's a that's a hard tongue twister. Um, there's too much money in uh, How do I say Jody? What's Jody? Oh, is this one of those things like buffalo, 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 buffalo that like a bunch of language nerds sat around and were like, hey, we could come up with this thing that nobody's ever going to say because of this thing. It's like um, it's that same sort of circular logic that said that Napoleon has an infinite number of arms. It's um, what, uh, what is that thing called? Fuck. Fortune? Fortune? The, uh, the Unix message of the day program. Is that called Fortune? That, like, had the dumbest bullshit, like, tidbits of knowledge in it that everyone was just like, okay, yeah, 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 this is, uh, this is a good source of humor. I shall learn how to I shall learn how to joke from here.
Oh man, uh, yeah. <laughs> Irish. Irish is good. Irish is good. There's some good Irish words. Yeah, the same people who made fortune went on to write Wikipedia articles and like get in that huge circle jerk. <laughs> look at the look at the talk page for that like one science fiction convention that was in like the American Southeast. God. God, what a fucking what a fucking thing. How how revealing about Wikipedia is like internal <laughs> internal machinations. Wikipedia wars, yeah. But it was basically um a pull or push lever. Pull or push lever. Nearby door open. Okay, okay I see. Um, probably he probably did. Jimmy Wales, Jimbo. Back before it got stupid, there was um, there was some good extreme pettiness on uh, whatever that fucking that wiki that all the fortune people used. Back in 2009 or something, before its owner decided to switch to, decided to just like one day shut it down and switch to a like, what they believe to be a more lucrative format in the form of the site O Internet. Um, yes, Gangrel. Yes, I I understand. I understand. But it's a, uh, it is an invented word, and therefore, it's not, uh, it is not in actual use, and therefore, there's no, there's no, uh, no proper way to pronounce it. I think I'm being followed. What could they want? <laughs> but, uh, it is, it is one of those things that, like, it's it's uh it's jargon file levels of humor which is like fucking fucking sysadmin wooks are not known for being great comedians all you need to do is listen to like free free software music free software uh comedy music and you'll you'll learn in five minutes everything you need to know about sysadmin type humor Of the like, of the like, leftover, leftover 1970s style sysadmin type. <laughs> Fuck, sysadmins today are probably just a, just a bunch of 20-somethings who are in it for the easy cash. <laughs> uh, burping and farting noises during cutscenes. Oh man, the, is the Tarrasque the thing that has like a billion hit points or whatever and regenerates like a million hit points per round? Um, can you imagine? Uh, can you imagine how many hit points it would have in this? It'd have like negative two billion hit points because the number is too big. Get it? Cause it'd be bigger than never mind. What the shit is this? Pull lever. One of these things is gonna open the door, right? Oh, there's levers on the other side. Good. Encumbered again.
There was a very good uh, Tomb of Horrors joke in uh, Hired Sword 2, which uh, Tobor was playing earlier. Huh, that's strange. Whatever that stupid Morningstar I sold a while back was, it has like the, it had like the highest damage that I've seen so far. <laughs> Are always more than 20 to 30 or something. What are you looking for? Some people call that rouge. All right. Back. Ow. Whoosh. Whoosh. All right, this must be the way to go. You die now. Oh. We won't have a moment as good as, uh... We won't have a moment as good as release the hounds and then the dogs just kind of listlessly wander around for a minute. Hellhound? Oh, that looks like a pressure plate. I liked that. I thought that was pretty funny. Release the hounds and the dogs just kind of don't do anything. <laughs> the hounds are released, sir. Were they doing anything? No! You didn't say have the hounds attack. <laughs> Release them. Fine. It's done. Very, very well then. Good. One of those situations where uh, throne of darkness. I don't think so. Ambush. Okay, he died. Good. Don't you think it's weird that, like... You've found an important lever! One left! Um, don't you think it's weird that, like, these monsters, these, like... Like... These monsters, these these low intelligence monsters, have rigged up this dungeon's traps and these like ambushes involving moving walls and mechanical levers and shit. And then and then locked their fucking dudes in these hidden rooms with no furniture, no toilet. Just stuffed him in there. No food. <laughs> and then just left him. They're like, when this one adventurer comes down the hall, you jump out. <laughs> I'd love a game. You know, I think it would be really... Uh, I think it would be really cool to have a... Um, <laughs> Summon giant fuck off dungeon, yeah. Um, I think it would be really cool. Speaking of summoning things, summoning things, we've got. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna switch back over to the bag of holding now. We've had the had the grimoire up for a while. We'll switch over to the bag of holding. There we go. Back to that. Now, um, it would be really cool, I think, to have a to have a game. Where, like, at the very least, you had a chance of encountering the monsters in the middle of a shift change. 
or something, right? So it's like, even if it's just there's like three different scripted events that can happen when you get to the area, and it's like, ambush, right? Holy symbol of Tempest. Among the remains of some poor, hapless creature, you find a medallion. Though it is badly worn and dirtied, the symbol of Tempest can be clearly seen etched on the surface. Where, like... Like... It would be really cool if it was, like... Yeah, you can encounter the monsters during the shift change when, like... A new group of monsters is coming in and another, like... Um, another group is coming out and it's like, here's the rotation... Like, you don't even have to have a, um... You don't even have to have, like, a full simulation. Just make it, like... Yeah, there's, like, a 1 in... A 1 in 10 chance that you're gonna... Um... There's, like, a 1 in 10 chance you're gonna get this version of the event instead. Okay, right. I was gonna do, um, 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 spinning strike? Oh, spinning strike? No. Uh, sweep attack. An unarmed attack that strikes and knocks back all enemies before you. Yeah, good, good. We got that. And then we can do piercing strike. 20 armor class reduction. 20 armor class reduction, if we do that, by the way. Sweep attack. Pierce. Oh, piercing strike is a. Oh, and crushing blow is... These aren't things that, like... Do anything. Sweep attack. Look at the wind-up on that! God, it, it'd be easier to just punch individually. Everyone. Is, was it Troika that made, I always get this confused, right? I always get this confused because like, um, I always want to say it's Troika and I think it never is. There's a game, there is a space game, yeah, like that, what if I do this? Okay, Crushing Blow can be pretty good. But who gives a shit? I just want Sprint on all the time, so I don't have to remember to, like, switch back to it. Um, there was a spaceship game, and the notable features of it were that it ran on Linux. There was a version available for Linux, I'm pretty sure. And it had, like, incredibly complicated... Uh, incredibly complicated, like, ship, not ship building, but, like, equipment configuration stuff in it. Like, um, you could, like, you could change the, like, generator, and then, like, each of your systems in the ship had different amounts of power that they used, and you could fuck with different types of shields and all this stuff and it like had the worst UI ever but it had like really cool shipbuilding ideas I think the execution was kind of poor though. and this would have been like 2000 -ish? what the hell was that game called oh we gotta get more levers um I might be getting it confused with, uh, who's the off, who's the, like, off-season Call of Duty developers? Treyarch? I might be getting that confused with Treyarch. If Treyarch made a game like that, then that's what I'm thinking of. Or, um, also possible, Vicarious Visions? It's some developer that did, like, a bunch of Shit that was definitely not, uh, it was definitely not that kind of thing. And then they also did this one weird space game. Uh, 
I mean, like, I'll I'll take a second right now to look it up, because it's like one of it's one of a f small set of developers that I get confused all the time. But I I guess I got all the things. Let's save the game real quick. And it wasn't anything that like, I want to say it was like it started with a T or something like Terminus maybe. Let's see. Let's see. Is it a game called Terminus? Is it a game called Terminus? Terminus video game. It is. It is a 2000 video game by Vicarious Visions. Very strange game. Very strange game. Especially for uh, Vicarious Visions because they did like a bunch of other like weird garbage that was garbage in the other Garbage in the other direction, I think, right? Like, they did a bunch of ports and, like, licensed stuff, I want to say. Here's my problem, folks. I don't have the attention span to, like, remember everything. So what I tend to do is I tend to just, like, compress all the data together. And, like, be like, okay, yeah, there's, there's developers that did these things. They're probably all similar. It's fine. Whatever. Close enough. And then when I try to retrieve that information, I'm like... There was a developer. They did a space game. They also did some other stuff that I don't remember. <laughs> okay, they did decent handheld stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They did, like, really weird stuff at first, and then they got into the, like... Did they get acquired by somebody? <laughs> Did they get acquired by somebody? <laughs> exactly. If I half remember it, I can remember I can half remember twice as much stuff. But it becomes problematic when I like conflate two things and like um end up with something way cooler than the original two things individually. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I wanted to check out that like cool game that did this thing. And it's like, wait, no, that, that doesn't exist. That's two games. That's two different games that individually are, are less exciting. A nearby door has opened. Yeah, Activision. I like that I'm so fast, it plays the attack sound twice for the first punch. These goblin shamans have like 300 HP. Something. Well, one of them did. That was weird. Yeah, he hit. Look at that. He took 298 hits and three, uh, Took 298 hits and three like uh, 30 something hits. Th there is a fucking door over here. Is it activated from somewhere else? It's a complete, fully blocking, fully blocking the passage with just some barrels. 
stacked up halfway to waist height. Right, we can get around it. Uh, not those barrels. I can punch many other barrels, but not those ones. Not those ones. And then I guess this is just a... Oh, maybe those are, um, sacks. No, these are barrels. These are indestructible barrels. But they had destructible barrels right next to them. Oh man, new dwarf GBA. See, handhelds are tough. Handhelds are tough for me because I don't have the means to stream hardware of handheld stuff. So it would be emulation. And like, I have no problem with emulation, but I like, I'll be honest, using hardware is like, is kind of a crutch for me to like, retain interest in stuff. It's like just that little, little bit of like, neat, like, oh hey, this is a cool thing that, that I can do. Um, well, Game Boy Player doesn't do, or wait, Game Boy Player is the, the, um, GameCube or the, uh, is that GameCube or is that, um, Super Nintendo? Yeah, the, the, the GameCube would be the only way to do that. And that's like... I'm... I don't have a GameCube. And like... GameCube might be one of... One of the worst... Systems to try to get... Um, it might be one of the worst systems to get high quality analog video out of. Uh, it, it is, it is like the worst, the worst offender. Um, I don't know what it was they did. Yeah. Those fucking component cables that are more valuable than... Well, first you gotta have the right GameCube. Right? You gotta have the right GameCube to use the cable on in the first place. And then you've gotta have the, like, $200 cable <laughs> to use it. And, like, who knows what's fucking in that cable. It must be made out of toilet paper or something. But, uh... You, um, it's, the GameCube is not, not an attractive console to me for those reasons. Um, so, well, I have a Wii, I have a Wii, but getting, getting other stuff out of the Wii is, it's also a problem. <laughs> um. However, however, my plan for the handheld stuff at this point is at some point in the future, I will get a, uh, a mister and I will probably use the uh, mister. Hey, BMF. Welcome. Nintendo seal of quality chip. Um, but yeah, the, my, my solution to the handheld consoles is, is pretty much the mystery. Because <laughs> it makes the most sense. It's like, it solves a bunch of handheld console problems all at once in a really easy to manage way. And it can do, and as far as I know, it can do analog signal output that is roughly identical to what the consoles themselves would put out. Um, it's just like, you're not going to have a monitor that can norm nominally that can display like RGB HV 120 by 360 or whatever the fucking weirdo screens are. Um, 
So you need some kind of intermediate solution to make it displayable and capturable, but I have those already. So if I can get analog output from the um, from the virtual DAX in the FPGA plan, that should be pretty good, I think. But again, I'll have to like look into My that. My God, that's fantastic. Feli, thank you for the host. Welcome, welcome. I hope you're doing well this Saturday, having a fun time. I saw you were playing. Are you playing earlier? <laughs> My memory, it's gone. It's gone. I did catch some of that Sonic the other day, though. That was fun. That new Sonic game, that the Sonic Mania or whatever it is, looks like a pretty good. Ah, Rogue Galaxy. Yeah, yeah. There's, um, Rogue Galaxy has one of my favorite, uh, it has some of my favorite, like, hey, no rep. Yeah, this is, uh, this is Dark Alliance 2, Nude Dwarf Game 2, Nude Elf Game. We had to switch to a Nude Elf because the, uh, the dwarf was not nude enough in this game. Um, yeah, so, uh, Rouge Galaxy has some of my favorite, like, full screen attacks? Cinematic attacks, we could call it. Um, and it's like, they're just, they're weird. They're weird as hell. <laughs> um, like, there's one where, like, the robot grabs the other guy and they like spin around and then the robot like shoots lasers everywhere and literally everything explodes. And like one where the another guy like uses like a cattle prod on one of the characters and they like grow Sephiroth wings and then like shoot electric death at everything. For most of the game, yeah, the like double and triple tech moves and stuff. For most of the game, for most of the game, I used um, what I'll call uh, food squad, which was like uh, the short, the short little guy who's like who's like a Scottish Jawa. And uh, the samurai dude, and the shark, anthropomorphic shark. Yeah, Simon, Jupus, and whatever the like, boring samurai dude was. Now here's the thing. Uh, that combination is unbelievably good. I can't hold anything else. That combination. I can't carry is unbelievably good because, it, or it's I should say it's unbelievably good for bosses. Um, with literally every other encounter, you just want to use um, Sandstorm. I want to say is the name of the is the name of the attack with the main character Desert Wind. There you go. You just want to use Desert Wind immediately in every encounter because <laughs> otherwise, like the battles take. 40 minutes. If you use uh, Desert Wind, it kills almost every enemy in the game in one shot once you level it up. And it, like... Um, yeah, it, like, kills everything and, like, the... The, um, the amount of damage it does you will find no other for the... The, uh, the amount of damage that it does decades. for the, the, like, point cost... It's just it's it's crazy. It's off the charts. So you can use it for every encounter, and then if you get if you get too deep into a dungeon that you haven't gotten to the next uh <laughs> I received <laughs> what? <new> shipment, <laughs> so if you don't see something that's, here that's now, incredible. <laughs> Japanese man Star Wars fan fiction where he cuts a melon with a PNG lightsaber. That's Fantastic. Um, so, fucking... 
Anyway, what was I saying? Fucking, uh, in, um, in Rouge Galaxy, you, uh, you use Desert Wind. If you run out of points before you get to the next save point that fully, re fully restores your, uh, your magic points, you just backtrack through the empty dungeon to where your save point is, <laughs> and get all your magic back, so you just level up your main character, Jaster Rogue, which is one of the dumbest, one of the dumbest names in a game. Um, you level him up like fucking crazy. So he ends up being like just this, this powerhouse. However, for boss fights, he sucks because like he, he doesn't do a lot of Damage, I guess. Um, so what you do is for boss fights, you use uh, whatever the samurai guy is. Did you say what his name? Did you say what the samurai guy's name is? I, I must have missed it. Um, you use the samurai guy, uh, the the Scottish Jawa, and the fucking and Jupus, Zagram, yeah, Zagram, Zagram, Steve, and, and Jupus. Uh, for boss fights because you use you use the energy drink the tea and the sake and it like it makes Zagram's attacks like he does thousands of damage per hit <laughs> I think I beat most of the bosses in two hits Bakusho Mondai no Shirikon Cho Naikai? I will have to look into that. <laughs> yeah, the. There's. There's. My thought about. Whoops. My thought about, um. Rouge Galaxy when I played it a couple of years ago. I played through it with some friends. We do like a little local game night here. Or we used to. We don't anymore. Um, we do a, 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 uh, a game night and um, <coughs> we played that and like my comment at the time was basically, I would have loved this game uh, back in, like, I don't know, like the mid-90s when I was a teenager. I would have loved all of the systems and, like, that there was so much stuff to put time into. But then, like, I kind of wasn't in the... I'm no longer, and I never will be, I don't think. Unless maybe at some point when I retire. Um, I'll never be in a situation where I'm like, you know what? I want to spend, like, 200 hours with a single-player RPG on my own. <laughs> just, just fucking around with it. Oh, man, are those... giant dongs? What are they called? My God, that's fantastic. Hakun, thank you for the host. <laughs> yeah, like having a two hundred hour a game with like two hundred hours of content when you're a kid and you're just like this is what I'm going to do after school instead of homework every day. Like, whatever. Yeah, like I had, I had fucking 80 hours in uh, Final Fantasy 2 on Super Nintendo. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> ropers. I don't, those aren't proper ropers though, right? They're, they're, um, what the fuck are those things called? The the stalagmites that are that are piercers? 
Piercers? Because ropers usually have, um... Ropers usually have tentacles, right? Yeah, piercers fall on you. What's a what's a ground piercer? Then? Is that a roper even if it doesn't have the like tentacles and shit? Get it stalag right. Oh shit. Driders. Is are like are roper tentacles? Are roper tentacles like dog kobolds? Are we do we have a dog kobold situation going on here? <laughs> I'm glad to see that repeated as text. It's even funnier as text. <laughs> Legend of Mana, that's the one where, like, you build items that you put on a map, and then, like, those are the new stages that you play. And, like, the items that you crafted. And there's a giant pumpkin patch for some reason. And a robot? This game doesn't have a. This game doesn't have a bestiary. Hmm. What am I thinking of then? Where like, well, I should say. Yeah, what's this guy? What is this? I don't see any... There's no... This fucker doesn't have any uh, tentacles. He's just spitting at me and he can instant turn. He's got no ropes. Maybe it's a donger. Stone donger. What's this? Roper. Yeah, but this has got ropes. The thing in this doesn't have ropes. It's the same. That's hilarious. Like, same picture. Like, back to back. That was good work. Good work, folks. <laughs> Maybe you lost. They've all lost their ropes. Somewhere in the, uh, should be. I haven't seen it, but it should be somewhere in the bag of holding, um, There should be an item. There should be a line for uh, two magic dongers. Their magic dongers is in quotes. Striders aren't intelligent, right? They're like animal intelligence. Oh, grim! Tentacle porn has existed since like fucking. What's that style of art? Sumie or something? I like weird ink stuff. Ah, you, uh, ukiyo-e, yeah. That's the one. I'm thinking, uh, I was thinking of the word for the uh, fancy writing. 
Yeah, there you go. Yeah. That was what, like 16th century or something? Maybe even earlier? Yellowish gray, rough, body, very malleable, usually pillar like in shape, nine feet tall, about three feet in diameter at the base, one foot in diameter at the top, little eye, sharp teeth. Yeah, I guess it's a, it's a, uh, it's a roper that's just not using its rope because it's got the little lumps. God, this... Jet. Finally, just getting some free gems down here, which is good. You need, remember, you need 16 gems of each type to, uh, 16 gems of each type to do a, uh, a plus five item. Holy shit. Does it say anything about ropers spitting darts at you? Fallout jet. Uh, look at this. Look at this fucking. How do I? How do I map? No. 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 There we go. Okay. I didn't like miss anything since the last save. This is just the next place to go. Driders are intelligent. You know, you'd think with them being intelligent, they maybe would be like, I saw this guy just punch the shit out of my, my bro here. I better attack. I don't think they'd do that. Lose half your strength. <laughs> God, what a what a pain in the ass monster. Speaking of speaking of ropers and pain in the ass monsters, um Fucking, fucking, what is it? Uh, Dragon Slayer. Original Dragon Slayer. The fucking monsters in that. The soft lock potential. <laughs> Abs. <laughs> um, the soft lock potential in in fucking the original Dragon Slayer, or even the Saturn remake, where like there was um. There was fucking a monster that could appear like most of the way through the game that would that would um, it would appear most of the way through the game and it would uh, it would steal all of your power. I, uh, so this game has an enchantment system. I'll, I'll, I'll kind of go through it. I'm a level 17 character. I've been killing everything, so I'm not, like, super over-leveled. I'm, uh, I'm a little bit over-leveled. Um, but I have plus five gear of everything. <laughs> um, and I got that through uh, a combination of, like, Poor design choices in the game. Um, the uh, the uh, um, 
the two the two factors that let you do this are the fact that if you import a character as a second player, they retain their entire inventory. So, um, the uh, the um. It, it makes duplicating items trivial, and then uh, on top of that, you can enchant weapons up to the maximum allowed by the game, uh, like almost as soon as you get to the town. Yeah, it's extremely easy to duplicate stuff. You can duplicate stuff for effectively infinite money, and then you can get gemstones and duplicate gemstones for unlimited power up to plus five, which is the maximum. Um, anyway, about, uh, Ultraloth's ra uh, lair. Ooh, save. Um, so, on, uh, on Dragon Slayer. So, uh, Oh, we got to cut Stop. some. Come here like that. Do not resist. Submit. Your will is my will. Your thoughts are like water to me. Ah, Jerk. Yes. Come to me. I am your friend and master. Jerk has given you a new uh, task. To serve me. Don't monks. A strong mind. I cannot control this animal. Resistance to mind control? Kill him, my pets. Kill him, okay. Covered the brassier of eternal flame, bronze bowl inlaid with jacinth runes, the body of Ulchaloth should be returned to Jerk in Baldur's Gate. Fucking get owned. So, um, Right, so, in Dragon's Lair, no, in Dragon Slayer, um, there were monsters that could, uh, a single hit from the monster would, uh, the cell door opens. Whatever mysterious force that held the cell door closed seemingly disappeared. The door swings open freely as if never locked. 87 gold and a pair of fine leather boots um yeah so in dragon slayer um there were monsters that would reduce your power to zero if they hit you if they hit you once sometimes even if they missed because the game did that um your power could only be increased by finding and collecting um power stones which were limited inside the level, or by leveling up. They didn't... Oh, return to surface via escape tunnel. Good, good. They didn't actually drain your level or experience. So, uh... <laughs> no one will check in the well. I'll hide here. Um... It does work off the unarmed, but look how... Look how fucking slow it is. Compared to... Compared to the regular attack, it's like... It's unbelievably slow. Yeah. It's fine. It's good... It's a, it's a good icon, though, yeah. It's a 
Get out of here. I also crushing blow, which is also really slow, I and, the energy. and piercing strike. Which I don't know how long piercing strike lasts, but like I haven't run into any enemy that I've had problems with the uh, where I've had problems with being able to hit them. So like armor class also doesn't matter for enemies, just like it doesn't matter for your character. Welcome. My prices are always more than fair, friend. What are you so. looking for? Fine leather boots, a remarkable throwing axe, fine gray axe. Yeah, remarkable stuff sucks. I want superior, right? Superior is the thing that I should get. Staff of the Warp. Amethyst, emerald... Amethyst and emerald. Does he sell emerald just straight now? He does not. What does emerald do? My shop carries the finest armor and weapons. The work of local master craftsmen as well as imports from Must to iron will. Who passes the other thing? Dexterity? <laughs> like I could see I could see sweeping strike being like kind of useful for uh, very large crowds of enemies but uh, it kind of sucks for like if there's two or three enemies it's not that great I need to take another quick break I will be right back. Please enjoy the bag of holding and some some more music.
I'm looking at that. I'm looking at that. I'm looking at those images. This is very good. <laughs> Incredible. Alright, I'm back. Let's get back to the game. There we go. <laughs> With a rubber garbage can hat, yeah. It seems like a fun, like a fun kind of person. So, uh, I was thinking about this, listening to those those mods. Um, welcome back. Friend. I I I think at some point I want to. Uh, I think I want to play Solar Winds on DOS. I want to see if I can finish that game. I can't do that here. It seems like it would be fun. A, a neat kind of thing. It might also be like literally impossible. I don't know. Let's talk to Jerk. The priests of Tempest must have been sad to see you leave the halls of Dragonspear Castle. You recovered the brazier of eternal flame? Good. Here, your reward. Priests of Tempest? What the fuck are you talking about? Tell me about the Oceanic Urn. The Oceanic Urn is an aquamarine studded golden urn, last seen in the hands of pirates based out of Seer's Cove. One of Rendala's ships could get you there, though you'd have to row ashore yourself. I'll return when I have the oceanic urn. Farewell. I can't do that here. <laughs> Sears Cove. Yeah, that is. <clears throat> oh man, boat rowing mini game. Uh, what do I want to do? Right, I want to go talk. I got like a holy symbol somewhere, right? Weird. Yeah, I guess I just talked to Randalla. Um. Every time I see. Every every time I see the word cove used. It reminds me of this, like, there was, like, a, a bowling alley in my hometown called The Cove, and it was, like, the fucking seediest small-town dive bar bowling alley you can imagine. Greetings again, adventurer. But they I had, like... things are going well for you. They had, like, a little side area with pool tables and uh, video games, arcade games. So I'd go there occasionally and, like... I would go there with, like, my older sister, and I knew it, like, I'm certain it, like, bugged the hell out of my mother because, like, it was the, it was not a place you wanted, like, I don't know, like a 10-year-old kid going to play video games. <laughs> it was such a fucking shithole. But that's what I, that's what I think of every time. Oh, I guess we just go to the map. <laughs> is that like a common thing? Is that like a... <laughs> is it just like... Is that what you call a... a fucking shitty dive bar? <laughs> it's like... Yeah, this is called The Cove now. Go to Sea Cave. Weird jellyfish. I like the detail that they like stuffed a little pirate flag into the sand there. Or like, who knows? 
Maybe you're maybe you're from the same town that I grew up in. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Stay away from the bar area as a couple of the older patrons tend to urinate themselves every so often. Wow. <laughs> <clears throat> Raiders Reef. Jesus. <laughs> if it wasn't like if it wasn't tremendously rude. Uh, if it wasn't tremendously rude and, like, probably against a bunch of terms of service <coughs> to do so. <coughs> I got pieces of almonds stuck in my throat. Um, it would be so fun to, like, just go around and, like, look at unusual places. I'm not talking about the, like, fucking, what is it, Guy Fieri does the, like, Diners, drive-ins, dives, and shit. It's like... All that shit is like... Uh, fucking, I worked in that kind of TV, and it's... It's it's so set up. But just, like... Doing little, like... Little, like... Extremely brief bits. On, like... It's this weird shit. The, like... The macaw games of bars, basically. Because <laughs> all the shit that gets put on TV is like... It's like fake touristy shit. <laughs> Every time I've seen it. Um, which caused me to stop looking at it. <laughs> so, who knows? Maybe there's... Maybe this already exists. But, uh... It's like... I'm trying to think of, of, of the, like, example... Of like, fucking, what's what's one of those games that everyone that's like that's like the um, hidden gem, darling, that everybody knows about and like everyone's seen a million fucking times, right? That's the kind of stuff that ends up on, um, that ends up on those TV shows. But like, I think it would be fun to like go and check out all that shit, you know, like fucking I've seen a little bit of uh, of Insomniac. It's kind of it's pretty good. It seemed pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I like there's weird shit. Okay. Okay, check this out, right? There's a bar. There's a bar in Los Angeles. Um I'm trying to think of I'm trying to think of what the fucking name of it is. I want I want to call it Down and Out, but I don't think that's the right name. I think that was our joke name for it. <laughs> but let's call it that anyway, right? This is a bar. We'll call it Down and Out. And like the few times I was there, it was just like I think one time was after a bunch of us got laid off from a uh, from games company unexpectedly. It was like that week, later that week. We were like, we got nothing else to do. Let's go to Down and Out. They got cheap drinks. And um, so I was there, and I'm sitting there like. There was almost nobody there, and it was like, I don't know, 7 p.m. or something on a weeknight, on like a Thursday. And it was like four of us in like one, like, one couple and like two people playing darts. And that was it. They didn't even have a real dartboard. They had one of those like electronic dartboards. 
not peak hours, but like evening. You know, not like, not like. Oh, we expected this place to be like super hopping, but also like usually there's like a bunch of regulars at a place like that. Um, like, I don't know, more people than that. <laughs> um, but what amused me. What amused me was I saw their schedule for the week. Now, I believe California law prohibits alcohol serving establishments from being open after 2 a.m. and they have to remain closed for a certain period of time after 2 a.m. So you can't have a bar that like opens at 2.01. Um, but what intrigued me was fucking this bar had their hours listed and they opened at 6 a.m. every day except I think it was like Wednesday when they opened at 5. <laughs> That's like Man, what the hell is so bad about Wednesday that you open an hour early? <laughs> Who is it clamoring to get into the bar at 5 a.m. on Wednesday? But yeah, they had they had one day that they were open like an extra extra hour early. Mortis! Mortis. I saw that I missed a stream of yours. I'm just sad. And it's sad that I didn't get to watch. Here you are. Welcome. Welcome, Ex Mortis. <laughs> yeah, most most bars they like they kick you out or they like have last call at like one or one thirty. Turbo Graphics Spelunky Music Pack. That sounds good. That sounds good. But, uh, but yeah, one one day they were um, they opened early for that for those Wednesday drinkers, Wednesday morning drinkers. They always thought it would be funny to go back there at some point, and uh, it'd be funny to go back there at some point, and uh, oh, it's Captain Chorus. It only does. You know what? You know what sucks about this? It like. I don't think it can crit. <laughs> I don't think crushing glow can crit. Oh, oh, did he like raise everybody from the dead or something? Dealing with a zombie pirate situation here? No Oceanic Urn. The undead pirates no longer possess the Oceanic Urn. Perhaps it lies in the legendary Sea Temple said to be beneath Seer's Isle. Yeah, there's, um... Oh, check this out. This is relevant. This is a relevant uh, anecdote that I can jabber on about while I'm playing this game. So... Um... So fucking there's a there's a a bar near where I used to live that's like it's totally one of those like rich guy decides to have a bar so that he has a place to hang out and maybe make some money on the side kind of thing um one of those kind of deals so it's like the interior's very eclectic it's got like all kinds of I don't know bullshit to make it try to look interesting and like of course, they have, like, absinthe and this, like, giant, um, uh, like, chilling thing for it. What's it called? Like a, um, it's a water fountain that, like, dispenses ice water. But it's, like, these three nudie ladies holding up a big fountain thing. I don't know. But, um, and yeah, it's, like... If you've ever if you've ever been out to a bunch of bars, you know the kind of place, right? You can tell it's like it's this guy's like 
kind of ego trip. Oh, what's this? Bullywugs? Bullywugs with over 200 hit points. Um. So anyway. So I would go there from time to time. They had a good selection and reasonable prices. Um. And uh, so I'm there. I'm there one day and I'm just hanging out. And there's this dude at the bar who like who's like sitting next to me and he's like he's just he's, he's just kind of asking some questions and like I kind of quickly realized I was like oh this is this is the owner of the place or at least a manager or something because he's like he's trying to figure out if it like what he's done here is you know is popular is well liked by patrons and like what they like about it getting some feedback to try to improve, improve the place right pretty good you know it's a good good thing to do kind of you know, walking among the commoners, if, if you will. Um, yeah, this is a pretty cool. I like the I like the the visual aspects of this level. Um, so, like, we're chatting for a minute, and then like I forget how it came up, but like the topic of of like video games and shit came up. And we started talking about like um, about the old like wizardry games and shit and he was like yeah yeah I remember in one of the wizardry games you could you could cast like the instant death spell on the end boss and you'd just like win the game like early or something cause you're like not supposed to win one of the fights or something and uh he's like yeah you, like you could do this thing and like I related some similar story from another different game, and uh, might have been like talking about it in like how uh, clouds of zine you can like warp straight to the end boss. Um, but uh, so like after we have this chat, and he like tells me his, um, he like tells me his wizardry story. He's like. He's like, hey, let me let me cover your tab. And he just like waves the bartender and he's like, all his drinks are on me for tonight. <laughs> so like talking about wizardry got me got me a night of free drinks. But then every time I go back there <laughs> every time I go back there I mention wizardry to him and get another night of free drinks. <laughs> Pretty funny. <laughs> Vanish in X zone yet. I love I love that the the Final Fantasy games are so um the Final Fantasy games are so like well looked at that there's like extremely weird shit you can do in them because like everybody's mined that data so deeply. I think that's pretty good. I think that's a good good thing. Oh, right, you can't pick which potions you use. So lesser healing potions are, like, entirely pointless. Wizardry Online. I became aware of Wizardry Online, like, a month after it closed down or something. Or, like, a month before. <laughs> And it wasn't what I expected. Me. 
I think, you know what I think happened? Is I like, I was like, oh shit, there's a Wizardry online game? Hell yeah, I love Wizardry 6 through 8. And then I went to check out the Wizardry online game and it had fucking Lollafells and I uninstalled it immediately. Or whatever they're called in that. <laughs> like, like, that's that, that's what I remember happening. And then it was like many years later or something. I like came back and I was like, well, maybe I could give this a shot. I could ignore the fact that there's like munchkins in it. And uh, it had shut down like a month before. <laughs> I feel like a lot of people want that, Mortis. Like, an extremely grindy, shitty Kingsfield would sell, like, fucking hotcakes in today's market. Just make it super obtuse, and then, like, have a bunch of, like, fifth grade reading level YouTubers explain the lore to you, or to the audience. Yeah, it, it definitely felt like a Final Fantasy XI clone to me when I played it, but that was also because of the goddamn munchkins. Oh man, you know what game had extremely obnoxious targeting stuff? Was, uh... Well, so, uh, Lord Grimmar, remember there's, like, there's an entirely different wizardry, like, hereditary, hereditary, what word do I want there? There's a, um, there's a, uh, an entire different lineage, there you go, lineage. Lineage. There's an entire, entirely different uh, wizardry lineage in Japan, um, down to like rights holders and shit. <laughs> Which is why like there's no wizardry in the U.S. anymore, but they can still make it in Japan because of like rights agreements and stuff. But they it became extremely big there. It was um, a whole thing that like became. Like a, a whole offshoot, and so like Wizardry Tales of the Forsaken Land, I think there is um, is like is one of them is like the the well known one, and then there's like a dozen other ones that were never translated. Uh, I should keep that sh short bow, maybe. Back. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, it's definitely a wizardry series Welcome game. Back, the the Steam one. It's definitely a wizardry series if game. Weapons, but um, it's part of the Japanese lineage else, instead of the, uh, the American the one. Place. Hmm. I feel like. I feel like I could do really well with that remarkable crossbow instead of this My fine murderous throwing dagger. It's 100% so it would be 24, well 24 damage. Oh, this does have variable damage. That's why it was changing, the acid damage. And then, um... Seeking arms and armor? I have everything you need right here. It's pretty remarkable. The short bow's probably faster. I could do twenty damage. I don't know. It's not worth. It's not worth buying all the shit that I need and like. My shop carries the finest armor and weapons, the work of local master craftsmen, as well as imports from Waterloo and on. So I can sell off these fucking things. These lesser... Oh, wait. Do I... Did I... Okay. 
lesser healing potions. You can just fucking wholesale you get rid of those. No other merchant with quality and prices to match mine. I've been supplying brave adventurers for over a decade. I have so many fucking rejuvenation potions. Like all the things that I have that use um. Okay, yeah, Labyrinth of Lost Souls and, and Tales of Forsaken Land. Those are the two wizardry games, the two Japanese wizardry games that I think have gotten translations so far. But there's like, aren't there like three others out there? And then there's the um, the spin-off games, the games that are like wizardry type games that um, came from Japan. Etrian Odyssey, yeah, Etrian Odyssey looks cool as shit. There's um, fucking. Uh, what's yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Elimin, eliminate eliminate mage um fucking and like that ha that was a whole series right Bilbo welcome Bilbo how did uh how did Eastern Mind go did you did you discover the lost souls of tong no oh nice did you complete it i don't know how you compressed 40 hours of gameplay into a single stream <laughs> four good <laughs> Perhaps they did not account for expert level players such as yourself. Yeah, it looks it looks really interesting. I'll have to watch the rest of the uh, I only caught like the first first bit of the stream. I, I'm glad I caught the manual lore too. I never really looked into the manual for that game. I assumed that was one of those games that had like a manual that was basically like, put the disc in, here's how you run the game, <laughs> bye. <laughs> but it did have it did have a tremendous amount of lore in the manual. It was good. The Dark Spire. I don't think I know the Dark Spire. I'm thinking of Dark Spire, which is a different game. Made by those who would later become Dreamforged. Right? Imagine if, uh, imagine if Hewlett Packard Lovecraft had termed his fishmen bullywugs in his books. <laughs> like you, you go back and you read the like turn of the century stuff and it's like, you know, his, his like, his descriptions of like, the like fishmen emerging and like the weird horror and then he's like I knew what this was. It was a bully wug. <laughs> That'd be good. Yeah, the wizardry uh OAV or whatever it's called. It's very good. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go. Obscenely. <laughs> I like the the version of the OVA that's out there. Out there. 
think it's on YouTube even, has like, it has English text at the bottom describing what spells are being used at any, like, at specific times, which seems extremely weird to me. But the English text is a different layer of subtitling than the, like, actual subtitles on it. So they're, like, probably in the original video before it was subtitled. Yeah, like, translator's notes of gameplay mechanics, but they're in English. They're, like, baked into the video in English underneath the, the subtitles. Yeah, like, that's the thing. Was, was it just a, a, like, hey, we can make this look cool by, like, putting this English text on it? And, like, only the real nerds will know what it is. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, I, I know. One of my favorite things is, um... The, uh... Random English words flying about. Intro. Uh, style of intro. Can someone, uh, can someone... Oh, fuck. Yep, they're bullywugs. before the sea mother, and be cleansed of the heresy you have committed here. Do not be afraid. Your sacrifice will be mercifully painless. Ah, such blasphemy in the face of the sea mother. A pity. You will be sacrificed. Your sins wash away like so much jetsam in the tide. Blipple blob. Look at these stupid ass names, come on. Oh, is that not Bullywugs? I thought the Bullywugs were the ones that had the fucking stupid ass names. The Koatoa as well. Um, does someone have the, uh, what the fuck was that? Was it just like a... Who's that designer? Yeah, Kuotoa have like... Shorter legs and like... Chunkier bodies. Um... There's a clip from when I was doing the PlayStation, um... PlayStation stuff. It's a, uh... Hold on, I'll find it. I'll find it! No, not select your buddy. <laughs> not not Black Matrix. That's a pretty good. That's a pretty good one, though. Um, Twitch.tv slash donuts clips. Get it in here. It's probably one of the top clips. Uh, not... Not top seven days, top all. Is it top all? Yet. Do 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 do. Here we go, here we go. Found it. Hopefully, hopefully this... No, for fuck's sake, why why do this? Why put sorting stuff on the clip itself? There you go. There you go, I found it. I found it. There's the clip I was referring to. Literally my, my favorite style of... Uh, my favorite style of... Uh, Intro. Hey, Xenaras. Welcome. <laughs> oh, oh, is that? No, that's not it. <laughs> oh, there's more guys beyond the boss. More regular enemies. Guarding the, um... We found the oceanic urn, an aquamarine-studded golden urn, hidden within the altar of blip dual ploop It should be returned to Jarek in Baldur's Gate. 
Blib Duel Poop. Good. Who knows? I didn't get very far in the game. It's an extremely slow adventure game. It's, um... Who the fuck is that guy? Is it Suda51 or something? Or or the other guy who has like a weird the lock pseudonym? I can't move it. <laughs> Who's the it's we're gonna guide for the broken land. Oh, nice, nice. <laughs> Did I? I um, I didn't see any. Uh, I didn't see any notification about submitted runs from uh, from speedrun. So if if I've been lax as an administrator, uh, please let me know. I'll uh, I'll take care of it. Okay, I'll take a look. I'll take a look after the stream today. So a door opened across the hall. Good. The lock won't open. I can't move it. Did it open? Oh, it opened this door. Look at this. Yeah, Suda 51. Okay. Yeah, what was the name of that game, uh, Lance? I think I'm being followed. What could they want from me? Dominic Terrison, thank you for the follow. You're having fun. Moonlight Syndrome. Yeah, there you go. That's the one. Looks like an interesting game, but uh, a bit slow for my tastes. <laughs> List of games emulated in MAME displayed on a monitor. That's good. That's good. <laughs> yeah, that's um <clears throat> It is from uh Dark Secrets of Africa. I gotta replay Dark Secrets of Africa one of these days. What a good um thing. The Oceanic Urn is missing from your belongings. One or more cunning thieves must have disguised themselves as a member of the ship's crew and followed you into the sea cave, stealing it from you without your realizing it. Perhaps Jerk will know what to do. I picked up the urn, and then I teleported back. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Dark Secrets of Africa is okay. It's a little... It's a little messed up. Because it kind of plays more like an RTS than a... Uh, kind of plays more like an RTS than a... Um, than a Diablo type game. It's not the worst game that I've played. Yeah, yeah. Someone stole it while I was in the middle of a teleport. <laughs> Welcome back, friend. What's the store have to offer? Sell. To protect you from someone else's. You come to the right place. So, 32 minimum damage on this morning star. We can get up to 60 minimum damage, or no, 40 minimum damage if we get the one that has the uh, 20 to 30. We could do 40 minimum damage. So we might want to do that. No other merchant with quality and prices to match mine. I've been supplying brave adventurers for over a decade. I can't do that here. I can't do that here. I can't do that here. Did I talk to the priest? Greetings again. I have heard of your good may helm. I can't do that here. All right, here we go. Here we go. 
Oops. I don't want to save. Have you recovered the oceanic urn from Seer's Isle? I did, but it was stolen from me before I reached the city. I had heard as much, but had hoped it only a rumor. My sources tell me the thieves are en route to the town of Hill's Edge, where they will hand the item over to a band of Zentarim. Can you recover the artifact? I'll travel to Hill's Edge and return with the Oceanic Urn. Farewell. <laughs> Good. <laughs> <laughs> Good. I love that when, like, you go to search for something and, like, the the current context is the only uh, the only thing you find. <laughs> I can gotta get Macaw to play Dark Secrets of Africa. Right, here we go. Hill's Edge. Here we go. Hill's Edge. Extremely resonant stomach on that giant there. Hello, giant. Hello. Okay, here's a guy who should have a couple hundred hit points, if anything. Seems fine. There's, um... Hey, Ashen Circle. Welcome, welcome. Am I missing something? I feel like... Save game. This is just a weird area with like. <laughs> I do want to stream it from uh, from real hardware, because I I ran into some kind of disappointing slowdowns with it. That might be helped by uh, by real hardware, but I'm not sure. It might be it might be difficult. We'll see. We'll see. I wonder if it'll work in. Uh, in Windows XP on my real hardware Windows XP machine because that would that would be the best way I think to stream because then I could stream it in like extremely high resolution so Howard Hawk is just this like tiny little fucker and you can see the whole map all at once Zentarum are a bunch of fucking chumps bunch of chumps G Temple 2. Oh, I don't know if anyone caught it uh, caught it uh, last night. Um, oh, we got a cutscene. What the? That's her. She must be here for the urn. Her head's worth a small fortune. <laughs> don't go back. I'm going to punch you so hard your friends are going to die. Why is this villager, like, getting in on the action? Oh, somebody cast, like, pure wounds or something. Um... I just want to point out, this peasant has over 110 hit points. Over 216 hit points. Oceanic Urn, you recovered the stolen Oceanic Urn from the body of the thief who stole it. It should be returned to Jarek in Baldur's Gate. Oh, the thief with um, 300 and something hit points. 
Oh, right. I was starting to talk about uh, last night. I don't know if anyone here caught caught it. Um, Aquas was streaming my uh, my 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 uh, game request, which was a game I played in the, uh, in the PlayStation dives called uh, N Gage. Kibun game Gotan go Unten Kibun game Gotan Gotan something like that which is a uh, which is a Densha de Go type game except it's entirely done with like model photography so it's really really cool looking um he played all the way through that. So if anyone if anyone saw that before when I uh, when I streamed it and was interested to see more of it, check out uh, check out Aqua's vod of that from uh, from yesterday. Very interesting game. Very very cool. Yeah, I put um, I think it was somebody somebody linked a tweet about the game and like making of it which is like there's just this huge warehouse and they've set up a, a like n gauge n gauge scale model of like a tremendous amount of the japanese like railway <laughs> they just like set up for the game and they're like they let people in to like look at it and stuff, and so it, it's really cool, really cool stuff. And then when you play the game, it's like you you get to you get to go drive around in the little train set <laughs> with a with a macro camera, so it's all you know it's all like looks like it's normal size. But uh, it's pretty fucking sick. <laughs> Yeah. Check that out if you get a if you get a chance. Yeah, it's like the it's like the trains from Mr. Rogers neighborhood except I like can't do that here. even more like realistic designs and you're you're going from like from like the, the close up perspective. And the tunnel sequences are really cool as well. <clears throat> I can't do that here. All right, all right. We got all your stupid artifacts. I understand the Hill's Edge affair was bloody, but no matter, you've recovered the Oceanic Urn just the same. As promised, your reward. Accept reward. <laughs> 3,000 gold coins and 4,000 experience. My thanks. Was that all the artifacts? That is all, yes. Though it need not be the end of our partnership. I have many things to speak of with you, adventurer. Important things, but now is neither the time nor place. Meet me in Omduil's manor here in the city. We'll speak again there. Okay. work quickly my lord already they have acquired four suitable elemental keys though the zintarum still hound them mercilessly ah everything is falling into place so neatly a little too neatly perhaps but i won't complain further zanhast yes my lord inform our allies in the east of our progress and prepare to activate the onyx heart soon the Western Hotlands will know a true king. I wonder if he ever gets, like, caught up on anything. Like he's walking down the hall and, like, accidentally hooks a tapestry with that giant thing on his back. Welcome. My prices are always more than fair, friend. What My prices are always more than fair, friend. Uh... 
He's selling superior stuff. Yeah. Superior Morning Star. Oh, Grand. Grand seems to be above Superior. I don't know. I can't really tell. Angelic. Disintegrate Undead. Improved Critical. Leave. Combat Reflex. Shock Damage. Everything you need. Right here. Vile Staff. Fine leather. Ah, oh, the fucking... They've got the dickhead helm in this again, but... Um... Ring of Cold Fire. Which gives strength and intelligence for some reason. Or armor to Charisma. Someone else's, you come to the right place. Okay, Amethyst is... Hmm... <laughs> I receive new That's, frequently. So if you don't it's, um, something here now, it's surprisingly I accurate <laughs> Atomic Dragons. It's it's pretty close. It's pretty close. Um From what I've from what I've read, it's like it's like Train driving mood game. Like train train driving mood game. And then yeah, like on a on a pia for um Yeah. <laughs> Engage. <laughs> Automatopia for uh, for um, train sounds. Now here's the question: If I welcome, what does your store have to offer? The work of local master craftsmen, as well as imports from Waterdeep and on. I have two morning stars. Yes! <laughs> Perfect! Perfect! <laughs> You'll have to argue that with your... Uh, with your dungeon master, Ashen Circle. <laughs> right, I gotta go somewhere where I can, like, practice attacking. Wood of sharp teeth. Here we go. The areas you can go to grind. Oh my god, I'm gonna have to... And they both hit. Fuck. Okay. 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 <laughs> time to... Time to change tack. Oh, it's so expensive, though. It's so expensive. Oh, we're gonna put all of our... Look how fast you attack! Etons. Look at that! <laughs> Holy hell! Oh, that's perfect. All right, now we gotta go. We gotta go enchant our morning stars. <laughs> we gotta go enchant our morning stars. <laughs> God, that's so good. And they stun. gonna be good <laughs> yeah oh, I wish you could fucking 
I wish you could pay to uh, uh, respec in this, but once you assign points, they're assigned forever. I haven't the energy. Yeah, the the crits aren't quite as good yet. Not yet. use any of my abilities with these? No. 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 I only use my abilities unarmed. But that's fine. I just want... It's weird. They do, like, way less damage against smaller targets, it seems like. Oh, they had that, that thing on. I think if I imported a character... Yeah, I could probably import a character and, like... Get them... Because it's Chapter 3 now, so I could get them a ton of experience from the, the experience merchant. It wouldn't take that long. I think I've done that before when I, when I played this game back in the day. But yeah, that's doing like 200 damage per hit. Because each one is is hitting for like whatever damage. Like the good news is I wouldn't have to do um I wouldn't have to uh grind enemies or anything a card of location yeah it's a map cuz we can just talk to her draw close my sister for i have gathered news both dark and delightful i know which branch of the dark ravens was unleashed upon our family their monastery is hidden in the cloud peaks far south of baldur's gate Their Archimandrite is a master murderer named Raisin, the Dire Hand. Travel there, Vedra, and avenge us. Furthermore, the secret scrolls each monastery guards will doubtless prove useful to you in your quest for power. I accept, and she'll leave the city immediately. Ah, she doesn't let me buy uh, XP My right now. Sister. That's okay. Ah. Okay, can I get new stuff from this guy? Yes. No. <laughs> Good. Good conversation. Thank you, dwarf. Ah, so the heroine returns. The heroine returns. Hmm. Well met again, adventure. I've heard little. Right, because presumably it scales the experience you get based on, like, what level you are. Yeah. Welcome back. Seeking arms and armor? I okay. have uh, everything. You workshop. Need. What do we want to do with these morning stars? That's the question. Right? We want 16 rune stones. <clears throat> I'm pretty sure we need like all coral on them.
Okay, so I need... I can hear strange music. It's really eerie here. I feel as if I'm in a strange world. Squish Monkey, thank you for the... Thank you for the Twitch Prime sub. I appreciate, I appreciate you choosing to use that here and support me. It's very kind of you. Hope you're, I hope you're enjoying all the content. I'm having a, I'm having a wonderful time presenting it. So, I hope everyone, I hope everyone has as good, a, as good a time as I. My shop carries the finest armor and weapons, the work of local master craftsmen, as well as imports from Waterloo and Ireland. Oh, wait, what do my gloves do right now? Improved critical combat reflexes. You'll find no other merchant with quality and prices to match mine. I've been supplying brave adventurers for over a decade. Max ranks 10. So if I have max rank, if... My God, that's fantastic. Just wicked, thank you for the host. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. <clears throat> Hope you're having a fine Saturday evening. If I already have plus five, if I already have five and it says max ranks ten, then it won't go any higher than. My shop carries the finest armor and weapons, the work of local master craftsmen, as well as imports from Waterdeep and on. Oh, a remake of uh, Dark Alliance. That'd be kind of interesting. A fine Sunday morning. There you go. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. All right. So we're gonna put coral on this because now it's plus. Now it's forty-three damage to, to start with. Right here. We don't need combat reflexes. We don't need improved critical. Fire damage, shock damage, or cold damage. Or or this. Or armor to protect you from or this. <laughs> you come to the right place. How about this for a for a weapon? <laughs> yes. Plus five superior morning star of conquest. Good. Yeah, this other morning star. I don't know if I'll have enough money to do this, but we need um, we need coral on it. Oops, oops, put the coral back on. Now I think on the offhand I want to put um, I need one more of those. I want to put acid damage on the offhand. So that I can kill stuff like trolls weapons, without changing weapons. Else's, come to the right place. Was that jade? Or emerald? Get, get all that. All of this coral. You'll find no other merchant and then quality and prices to match mine. I've been supplying brave adventurers for over a decade. Whoops. Fuck. There we go. Yeah, plus five to twenty. Um. Because that's the only thing. Superior murderous morning star. It even sounds cool. It even sounds cool. Not this offhand talk. Welcome back, friend. Sell arms and armor. I have everything you need. Right all that here. crap. Sell all that crap. I don't need this stuff either. <laughs> Two small live gazelles. Yep. <laughs> they can fit. They can fit in there. 
I feel like I might have had to reduce the list size for the bag of holding compared to the uh, the infinite grimoire. Uh, because OBS sucks. Um, so there might be some stuff missing. Skull Gorge 2. Um, there might be some stuff missing. I thought there were supposed to be two magic dongers in there. But it doesn't seem to be displaying that. There we go. There we go. Single hit for 396 damage. 400 damage. Two magical dongers? It's in there? Good. Good. My god, that damage. What? Shit. <laughs> Yeah, I could probably kill Elminster in one hit. <laughs> I don't even have this stuff maxed out. Like when I gain another level, it'll be it'll be even more damage. In some games, dual wielding just absolutely sucks. Like um Neverwinter Nights 2. I think they made dual wielding just garbage. For some reason. Although, although, funny. It did. It did make the whole game garbage. Um. Uh, what was I going to say? Uh. Fucking something you could do in Neverwinter Nights 2 that was pretty funny was um dual wield monkey grip improved critical great sides <laughs> was pretty good. It was wasteful, though. The problem with it was that it was wasteful. Yeah, monkey grip. So, yeah, dual wield, monkey grip, great size, improved, like, all of the improved critical hit feats. And, like, you'd get, like, I don't know, six attacks, and each one had, like, a like 40% chance to be a critical hit. <laughs> and it looked ridiculous because of the animation system. So that was good. Um. I was fate. Is fate that MMO where like you play a new generation every time you die or something? Am I thinking of something different? Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah, so a barbarian could uh, could dual wield two handed swords. Also, you could um, single player cartoony. What am I thinking of then? I think they forgot to put the secret door in here that goes into the other part of the cave. That's okay. Yeah, the horse teleporter. Um, the bucket brigade since, like, giving an item was a free action. Since giving an, as giving an item was a free action and, like, filling a bucket was also a free action, I think. Something like that. You could, like... You could have... You could basically have one person... 
uh, give and receive buckets and like dump the uh, dump the the person at the other end dump the buckets out so you could empty the ocean to another location in like um, you could empty the ocean to another location in like uh, uh, within six seconds I guess Just the minimum amount of time that can be measured <laughs> in D&D terms. Imagine if you played this game with a shield. Imagine what kind of chump you'd be. Instead of doing like... Instead of... Oh, fuck. Instead of doing, like, 400 damage a hit. See, the, um, the thing with the NPC railgun, though, is that, like, because giving is a free action, you can move the rock, right? The rock moves that far, but giving an item doesn't necessarily, um, are these trolls? Ogres? Is that spaghetti? Is that nude spaghetti from the first game? It's spaghetti. Booked you. Um, so, like, right, right, right. So, all the, all the, all the free actions are taking place within the same, like, uh, six second time frame, right? But, a reasonable DM would basically be like the the rock or whatever doesn't accumulate velocity. So when it's when the the peasant at the end or whatever lets go, it just it it's the same action as if it's dropped, right? So um, however, however, because like. Um, Oh, yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. Like, like in, in real-world physics, right? But in terms of, like, game action mechanics, dropping an item is always dropping an item. There's no, like, you can't be, you can't be said to be holding an item that's going, you know, thousands of meters per second. Um, so, you know, person at the end drops it, you effectively just teleported the rock from one end of the chain to the other. Um... However, where it gets where it gets more interesting is like the um, when you're doing the stuff with the um, when you when you get into the stuff like um, using the like uh, using a bucket to like like passing a bucket down the line and having the last person like fill and empty a bucket um you can end up with like i don't know it's some it's some stupid thing that any reasonable dm wouldn't allow of course but um the idea behind it is that you can like you can do stuff like you can you can create a large amount of a large volume of water in one place all at once and since there, there's no like physics or or anything like that um, happening. It's just a matter of like, okay, say you have a big, like say you have a dungeon. 
say you have a dungeon and you're pouring water into the entrance. You can you can pour this huge torrent of water into the entrance. Um, as a result of the whole like NPC shenanigans. It's just you have to have enough money to be able to hire them to do it. <laughs> it's like, okay, we drowned out all of the uh, we drowned out all of the goblins. But um It's odd. It's a community effort. Yeah, once a year they go out and just fill the dungeon with <laughs> with water. But uh one of the like, what was I gonna say? One of the interesting things about like Dungeons and Dragons is that like you, um, there's so many ways to break the game, but it was designed just to be like, hey, channel all the goblins. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, <laughs> all the stuff is ruined. It's all rusty. The gold got flushed out. The hostages are dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. Of course. Um, but it's it, it functions also as a, like, just a, like, amusement what-if generator. And I think that's, that's one of the great things about D&D is, like, the fact that its rules can be made so stupid... I think that's the big thing that, um, that's the big thing that CRPGs miss is when you put it in a computer, you limit the amount of stuff you can do with it. Um, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of what I call uh, first edition advanced Dungeons and Dragons light which is basically you remove all of the like weirdo cruft that is very obviously Gygax is doing um, and and make it streamlined and kind of fun to play but you still keep the general balance Welcome of it back. from a My numeric perspective the, finest armor and weapons, the work of local master craftsmen as well as imports from why are morning stars so goddamn good <laughs> you'll find no other merchant with quality and prices to match mine I've been supplying brave adventurers for over a decade. Like, here's the thing. There's a bunch of stuff in first edition AD&D that I don't think any living person actually put in their games. Like, the, like the monthly, for every, for every month in game, you had to roll a disease check. Um, to see if your characters caught a disease and if they did like you could literally be like okay you know good uh you know your good session guys all right you know a month has passed so roll for disease all right your character is dead <laughs> sorry your character died roll a new one ah so the heroine returns um and i think that stuff like <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Like, yes. like. No, I. The um. A lot of that stuff got like. Yeah, I, I like all the stuff you can geek out on, right? But there's a lot of stuff in there that like. Um. 
Like, yeah, it's cool. It's cool that you have to find someone to train your characters in, uh... You have to find someone to train your characters. That's a cool idea, right? Like, hey, you're fifth level, and there isn't anybody in this village who can t teach you any more than you already know. That's a cool concept. But, like, the way it's spelled out where it's like, okay, you have to pay 1,000 gold pieces per level and spend one, one week in-game per level on... Uh, on training your character. It's like, okay, sure. Like, it's nice to have that laid out in an explicit format, but also like, it completely ignores why that's a, a fun or cool thing to do. And like, that was the, that was the weird thing. It was, is that, that it was like, I don't want to fucking role play two months of <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's that's why I say like first edition advanced dungeons and dragons light for me is like take some of the take some of the extremely nitpicky stuff out and the like stuff that like, if you've ever looked at the books for Cyborg Commando like um you can tell <laughs> you can very easily tell um what parts of the game were Gary Gygax um and like what parts were what came from came from elsewhere and it's like Yeah, it's it's the the stuff that Gary Gygax like added to the system is the stuff that's like um it's onerous. And I think a lot of that stuff can be streamlined without losing the coolness of of uh of the role playing aspects of it, right? Like Spell components is another, like, material components for spells is another really good example of this, right? The idea, the thought that a mage has to have all this, like, weird esoteric stuff um, is cool. And if you're a, if you're a good... Um, <laughs> exactly. Like... It's it's something that like you don't even necessarily have to ignore it, but you can streamline it. For example, at the end of an adventure when your when your characters get back to town, tally up their their earnings for the adventure and like deduct a certain amount from that for their provisions and stuff that was it was assumed that they used. You don't have to have everybody keeping a an individual tally of all of the exact, you know, how many rations they had and blah, blah, blah. Um, right. It, it's like that stuff can be can be streamlined, but it's also like character wants to cast a spell that uses some weirdo component or something. Use that as a limiting factor for how often they can cast the spell. Somebody wants to cast... Create food and water every encounter. <laughs> it's like the start of the encounter. Um, you know, like keep track of that. Like, figure out what it is that they need to have. Um, like, uh, it's it's also uh, it's also cool to like, like you need to you want to. You want to uh, get a spell component for this thing that's that's um, that's super weird, like fucking. You gotta go get it. That's a whole quest. You want to cast this weirdo spell, like yeah. Hey guy, hey guys, can you help me go to the cave of such and such so I can get a fucking like unicorn tail feather or whatever? 
And then it's like, yeah, okay. Well, now you gotta... It has to be taken from a living unicorn. So, um... So, like, not just... You can't just go there and kill the thing. Um... The Grease Wizard. That sounds like a... That sounds like a small town, uh... It sounds like a, a like a small town business. It like helps you with your loose like loose doors and stuff. That spider was still taking damage after it was dead. Four hundred and ninety-one damage. I think it just did one hit. <laughs> Stinking Cloud. Stinking Cloud is a really good spell in, uh... It, what? <laughs> what was that? What did I just do? Fuck. Um... Wee. <laughs> uh... Stinking Cloud's a great spell. The thing is... Uh... The thing is, uh, one of the best examples of why, of like the differences in versions of, of Dungeons and Dragons to me is um, the description of dancing lights in the, uh, in the first edition player's handbook. The description of uh, dancing lights in the uh, in the first edition player's handbook versus the entire list of spells that wizards get in fourth edition, like literally the entire list, which is like, hey, we made a spell that does uh, that does one to six damage of every different element type. These are the ones you can cast. Um. My god, that's fantastic. So Cancun, thank you for the host. Welcome, welcome. But yeah, like it describes in the in the first edition uh player's handbook, it describes this like this incredibly like weird variety of scenarios of like how you can use dancing lights to to like better your your uh to like to do stuff, to do different types of stuff. Like, um, oh, you can, you can use it to trick people into thinking your, um, into thinking your group is larger and scare them away. Or you can, um, you can use it to mislead people or you can uh, make people think that it's will-o'-wisps and that kind of stuff, right? Welcome and if, it, if it's back, done convincingly, friend. then you don't have to use a separate spell of, like, illusion, right? Because you're, you're just tricking people right <laughs> you're not you're not making them uh yeah, one kender toddler what a good thing to have in your bag of holding um you're not like you're not doing anything specifically magical as like an illusion that can be resisted you're doing something that You'll find relies on quality and prices to match the target's own intuition and your character's performance. So it's all about you as a player performing well. Um, so like you you get into this kind of uh, you get into this let's go to the dark monastery. Um, you get into the situation where like the players are encouraged to role play well because doing so makes their characters more effectively. Um, <laughs> but the difference with that and like, like, hey, what are you doing? Um, the difference between that and like the fourth edition spells, and fourth edition is the is the most egregious example because fourth edition is a 
is a glorified board game, right? It's it's a uh, it's a CRPG in in tabletop form. It's an MMO that you can play with dice, but um, but that's one of the things, right? Is that like what's this? It's just a it's just a burning pillar in a in a fountain. I'm reading. Um, but it, it, it's kind of a, uh, yeah, the water, water in this game. Well, like, fourth edition probably still had, it probably still had opportunities to do stuff like that. But you would be working against the system rather than, like, rather than using the system as described, right? And I think that's that's a big part of why people took 4th edition the way that, that they did is, like, yeah, sure, it gives you the tools to do so, but it leads you... Yeah, exactly. It leads you away from doing anything creative with it. Um, the guidance that it gives is very much like, okay, this is this is this is how you do this, and it's this game is entirely about like dealing damage and rolling dice, and that's pretty much it. Um, but fourth, like. I started reading 4th edition and stuff, and I was like, the big thing that stood, the, um, the big thing that stood out to me was wizards literally do not have any of the spells that are to be used specifically creatively, right? Like, if I remember correctly, the enlarged spell has a range of one humanoid target, right? It, um... It cannot be used on inan inanimate objects. And it doesn't describe its use as such. It describes it as, like, the target as being a single person. And, um, like, it only describes the use on a person. So if you take the rules to be, um, that's a very strange way to open that chest. Yeah, and then, like, I'll be honest, I've never had the opportunity to really dig into Dungeons and & Dragons and, and play a campaign for a long time. And it wasn't that the, it wasn't that wizard spells weren't powerful. They were just very straightforward, very simple, right? There were spells that did damage. There were spells that granted attribute buffs. There were spells that did, like, explicit things. And a lot of the spells that had creative uses were missing entirely from Force Edition. It's not to say that there weren't, there weren't rules to, like, allow you to make spells that could do the same things. Or that you could use existing spells to do that kind of stuff. But they very carefully, stri they very carefully stayed away from, like... Uh, talking about that kind of stuff in the description of the rules themselves, right? Right. They had like they had like one super open ended thing, and then like um, they had like one super open ended thing, and then they had everything else was extremely explicit in terms of what you could do. With it. And they had, like, I think they had, like, cantrip, which was, like, you can do this, but it's limited to these things. Here's some examples of stuff you can do. Um, but it wasn't, like, it felt like they didn't mean for you to use cantrip for those kinds of things. Um, what the hell? There's, like, a million fucking Amazon... Uh, <clears throat> Yeah, 
you know, the, the memorizing thing in D&D, I kind of don't mind so much because it's like... From a, from a functional perspective, it's kind of like a risk-reward scenario. <laughs> Three Bozak Draconians ready to be hurled. Um... Man, I would... I feel like it would be a lot of fun to get a few folks together from the community and try to, like, try to put together, like, a um, tabletop simulator D&D game thing. I think that might be fun. Probably be easier to, to get folks free time on that than, like, trying to actually get people physically together. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Tabletop simulator, Discord call. It could be really fun. Ah, oh, that sucks. I'm sorry to hear that, Kevin. I hope they recover quickly. <clears throat> I hope they recover well. Yeah, definitely. I have, um... I had some campaign materials. I was gonna... I... Fucking... I end up being the, um... Being the person most likely to DM because I, like... I'm willing to put the time into that kind of stuff and, like, prepare stuff. Oh, here we go. Walk through the wall there. I am Drayson, our commandrite of this monastery. And you are the missing Oswir. Convenient. Only one of two, dire hand. No, I do not make mistakes. There were no bastards in the contract. Your half-sister means nothing to us. No mistakes? Then how do you account for my standing here, assassin? Whee! An error on the part of my men, which I intend to rectify immediately. Farewell, Vedra. <laughs> Dre's door and... <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> oh, man, we're going to fuck this guy up. Oh, he does a flying kick. And then he gets fucking owned and his friends die. <laughs> Oh, man. That was good. Oh, <laughs> they dropped stuff where they fell, too. Um. Ah, uh, yeah. Captain Al, I, I hope that... I hope that works out, works out well and they recover. <clears throat> yeah, I, I, um... So I put together, like... I still have the notes of it because I kept... I put them... I smartly put them all in one note. So I could get at them later. I have notes of like a whole world system that's that's um, designed to work with first or second edition AD and D. Um, I think it would be fun to play. It's the same place where I smashed the pots. Are they reusing stuff? Are they reusing levels now? Knock off goblins, yeah. Planescape Torment, the game I was thinking of. I don't, I don't think I was thinking of Planescape Torment. I don't think of it often. What was I describing? What game was I describing? <laughs> I might remember it now. <laughs> I don't have the Jarun books, Bill Bull. Nor do I have the Talislanta books. No elves. Just elf-like looking and acting creatures. <laughs> 
Oh, I was thinking of, um, I was confusing the release date of, uh, I was confusing the release date of, um, Temple of Elemental Evil and, uh, the Pool of Radiance game, the Pool of Radiance remake game. Jorun. Sky Realms of Jorun. Alien logic. Leave your world behind. Um, so yeah, I, I built this, like, I built a world of, like, just enough information to, like, give, uh, I don't know, give characters a background and stuff without, like, overdoing it. <clears throat> Oh man, <laughs> that's like laying a burning bag of poop on somebody's doorstep. Hey, um, so one of the things that I like to do when I was Drazen has oh, fallen. Go. I humble myself before your might, dear sister. I have already sent agents to burn the monastery. Did you recover the Dark Raven scrolls? Yes, here they are. No. Keep them for yourself. Learn their secrets well, Vader. I'm certain their Dark Raven's assassination techniques will complement your already potent skills. I will then. Farewell. Gain 8,000 experience points and gain access to new feats. Oh. Level up, too. <laughs> oh, man. Stuck together, huh? Alright, what do we want to do? We want to do, um... I guess we'll get rid of the dead point here. Alright, what did we get? What did we get? Crippling blow. Arterial strike. Uh... Stealth state? Hail of knives? Allows you to throw multiple knives at once. Poison. Inflict additional poison damage. But, like, some of these might be fucking... Sneak attacks. We're doing more two-weapon fighting. Costs 15. We'll be able to get that next level. Um... Yeah, I have, um, I have all the core books of, uh, AD&D 1, 2, and 4. <laughs> um, and then I have the PDF copies of the rest. Um, do I want sneak attacks? Stunning blow is pointless. Sweep attack is pointless. Hail of knives might be okay. Oh, no, wait. Hail of knives is an ability. It doesn't just affect your... Um... What if we do... Yeah, we'll do deflect missiles. That's good. And then evasion is the other thing we can put points into. Can I give you more money yet? Then do we... No. Okay. Um... But yeah, I have I have uh original um Ah, so the heroine returns. I have the original AD and D I have the like second second printing of AD and D first edition or first edition, second printing stuff. And then I have the second edition stuff. Those are all the books that I had when I like when I was a kid. Yes. No. This is a good conversation. Yes. No. <laughs> Good. <laughs> um, but yeah, and I have uh, Monster Manual 1 and 2, maybe? For, I have the, the original Monster Manual. And I have uh, Monstrous Compendium 1 and 2 in the uh, 
in a binder format. Taking arms and armor, I have every shoddy halberd. Right here. Oh, plus four imperial hissing throwing knife. Yeah, I can. Yeah, this is a better throwing knife. It's gotta be, right? Is the acid damage included in the. If you need weapons or armor to protect you from someone else's, you've come to the right place. I wonder. I wonder. Because that's 14, but this is like... How do I break this? Yeah. Okay, it was adding it. Damn it. I received new shipments frequently. So, if you Damn it. see something here, now, check back from time to time. But yeah, like... I, I think it would be really fun to, like... I don't know. The... Play a game. Like one here. of them games. Do a, a thing like that. A, um, one of the things that I did when we were trying to start up a game here locally is... Um, oh, there's Omduil's Manor. That just I hangs out in all of the... Um, I can't do that here. That just hangs out in all of the like previously evacuated monster zones. Um, when I was trying to get a game, get a game together here locally, I actually like before we got everyone together because I knew it would be like getting four or five people together on uh, on the same day, at the same evening, consistently is incredibly incredibly difficult. Um, so what I did is I ended up. Um, I ended up sitting down with everybody one on one and doing like character creation backstories so that everyone had their character started, they had their inventory, they had a, a like what does your character do? Where do they come from? What's their like motivation? All of that kind of stuff sorted out so that like um when we got started, everyone knew where they were, why they were there, and like had an idea of what they thought about the other characters. And so that was like, greetings again. How am I? That, I think that helped immensely in getting everybody kind of excited about what was happening. I have heard of your good works in the city, but not may Helm Watrovi. Yeah, yeah, it, it it really helps like doing that kind of stuff, and and because a lot of people were like first time. RPG players as well. I think it really helped get them into the the idea of like, how does this work? I like went through a bunch of like small, like um, small example kind of scenarios of like, here's how you roll the, here's how you roll dice to resolve like an ability check and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, exactly. And like getting Benzie. everybody together was. Uh, Was really important so and that's why i think like it would be really fun like if it's possible to figure out a time or like a, a consistent Welcome way to get to everyone together online to do it and like rare, what are you looking for? it's even harder now because like not not now specifically now but like getting people together online is harder in certain ways because it's um, it's like uh, you have to deal with all the di like the different time zones and stuff. So it's like um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but there's a lot of interest. One of the things I'd like to see is like figuring out a way to, to figuring out a way to have a session that's what's the word I'm looking for? Um, resilient, right? Like, like resilient, so that people can come and you can play with whoever's there, 
and it makes sense that if people aren't there that they're not like missing out kind of stuff anyway you know I'm thinking I've been going for what six hours I think I might wrap up we just got to the new chapter and we did the one uh, did the one side side quest. Yeah, yeah, I want to do that as well, like, figure out a way to do, like, ongoing stuff. And it's like, I'd like to, I'd love to do that. I want to, I want to figure out how to set that up and, and get people doing that. I don't know if Tobor is around right now, but he's been, he's been really consistent at doing the hero quest stuff. And I want to get him involved as well, because I think he has that kind of, he has a good magnetism for drawing people together to do this kind of stuff reliably um so i think that would be good but i think it would be really fun just do like you know tabletop simulator so you have the the miniatures and stuff and you can get people doing that and um like just if get I have to a good game longer, together I'm whoever strangling you with that controller cord what wait what was that hold on a second That's what I heard. That's what I heard, Cuba. That's got to be super rare. Oh, good. Someone clipped it. Huh. How strange. Also, level 20. Level 20. <laughs> Isn't that, like, epic level now? I mean, I guess I do, like, a couple hundred damage per attack. Anyway. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, I'm an immortal now. Um, but, yeah. I, uh, it, if anyone... If anyone's interested, please uh, join join my Discord. We can uh, probably discuss it better there. So it's not like when I when I decide to wrap up the stream, <laughs> it's like oh no, the discussion has to wait for several days. <laughs> yeah, let's let's save the game. Let's save it over this one. Ah, uh, there is a there's a link with the like the actual link formatting removed underneath the stream. I'm pointing down at the uh, pointing down below the stream. <laughs> um, you just need to add in the like the slash and the dot I think. Something like that. It's sanitized so that scraper bots don't come into my discord all the time. I wonder what triggered that idle thing. But yeah, yeah. I think that'd be interesting. I think that'd be fun. And yeah, like, um... <laughs> yeah, it takes a few hours in a PC game to, to get to level 20. And have 300 hit points. And do, like, 400 damage per hit. <laughs> With an extremely fast attack rate. Oh, let's... Let's get over here. Let's... That game is we've we finished this game for now. Let's get some good uh, good music going on here. Get to the wrap up screen. I'm 
but yeah, the the Discord link, the Discord information is is down below the stream in the panels. Um, if you're interested in doing some tabletop simulator stuff sometime, please go to the Discord or just talking about stupid crap and looking at pictures of a guy with a with a lightsaber <laughs> cutting a melon.